shoutouts and and YouTube shoutouts, and we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Tuesday night. It's nine o'clock here in Central Time Zone, so that must mean it's time for Two A Tuesday. So, welcome, everybody. We've got uh, fun chat. Uh, hopefully, a fun chat planned for you. You know, these last couple of weeks we've kind of gotten into some some kind of heavy stuff, and we've got one or two more ideas for uh, weeks to come that'll be kind of heavy. Um, so I wanted to make it kind of fun and make it not quite so uh, so heavy, so doom and gloom, I guess, of a chat tonight. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just the do's and don'ts of carrying a firearm, uh, whether it's concealed or open or what's whatever's legal in your state, uh, things like that. And we'll kind of discuss some of the stuff. Um, some of this I got from a video here recently that uh, I decided I'm not going to mention who it is just because I don't want to call somebody out. Um, all they're doing is putting their own opinions up on YouTube, which is what I do. So I'm not going to say that they shouldn't do that. But some of the stuff that they said, I don't really agree with all of it. And so without starting a feud or getting their names involved, we're just going to touch on some of the stuff that they said that I didn't really care for or agree with. And we'll get, uh, you know, we'll get a different viewpoint out there and then see how the panelists feel about it as well. So real quick let's check the gun channel side uh if you're not on gunchannels.com and you are pro second amendment then something is wrong with this picture it's free to go join gunchannels.com uh it's not hard to find it just type in gun and then channels and then a dot and com gunchannels.com pretty easy even i can do it i'm from nebraska um so uh that makes me smart by the way but um if you haven't joined up on gun channels, you need to go do that. If you're on a computer, it's real easy to watch this simulcast right over there. And you can get into the live chat and do some typing uh, alongside right over there. If you're on the YouTube side, then you can do that too. And you can chat uh, down below or off to the side, depending on how it's set up. Uh, so we like to hear from everybody. If you're on gun channels, we can see you. And uh, so hello to Jim and to kingpin and to uh, rich white everybody out there on the gun channel side what's up um, if you're on the youtube side we can't see you unless you make a con uh, comment so say hi let us know you're out there and uh, go ahead and sound off and throw your own opinions up there we ask that you keep it classy we don't want uh, bad language anything that you couldn't say in front of your grandma or that you can't say on television before eight o'clock at night it's probably not going to be allowed by my moderators or myself on our chat either. So we do try to keep it classy and not, uh, we want it kid friendly. We want it to be a family show, even though sometimes we talk about some heavy subjects. Uh, we don't want this to turn into uh, just a bunch of bad language and turn people off. So, all right. Who do we have on the YouTube side? We had Stealth Hunter 1000 out there. Uh, that was He was out there in the chat before I was. Uh, the beautiful Sand Hill Sweetheart, who is off the camera, off to my left as well. Um, Boob Sweat is out there. Speaking of keeping it classy, Boob Sweat, we love your name. Jason Stewart is out there. Uh, Jim is there and Gun Channels and in the panel. Two hotties out there. Uh, Freedom for All. King Pin doing triple duty as well. Uh, who else do we have out there? Rich White doing triple duty. Um, Southpaw RX is out there. Gun loving Grandpa Stanley is out there, and I know there will be others come through. Uh, we've got a few people watching us on Facebook. On Facebook, this is not the real feed. Just so you know, if you want to actually see and hear what's going on a little bit better, join in the chat. Go join us over on YouTube or on gunchannels.com. The YouTube link is up on the Sand Hill Shooter Facebook page. And if you're friends with me personally, then I posted it as well. Uh, so go check us out somewhere if you want to be in the actual chat. Otherwise, those of you watching on Facebook can just kind of see a little bit of a uh, kind of a side feed, I guess, of uh, of me, and you can hear the audio from from the panel. So we'll see if that works or not. We might not do that again. Heck, we might do it again next week. We never know. So we have uh, a rather esteemed and uh, diverse group of people on our panel tonight that are going to help us with our chat. Uh, so who else? Oh, we've got uh, Midnight Range out there in the chat as well what's up other travis also known as food travis also known as travis number two so in our panel we're going to let everybody say hello we have got uh forklift also known as squib load i'm not sure what's up with this cool picture of the forklift but i like it and 
tell you what, man, I miss the days that I used to drive one of those. Oh, well, um, yeah, I mean, I just thought that maybe since it's second shift, you might want forklift guy on the show. Okay. I thought forklift guy was your nemesis. No, there's an imposter out there. I don't know who they think they are, but on the other hand, there is a little bit of forklift guy in everybody. I mean, really, if you've always wanted to drive a forklift or you've ever driven a forklift or you drive one now, even if it's just for five minutes a year. Yeah, there's a little forklift guy in everybody. There's a lot of forklift Speaking of which, so when I first logged on before the you went live, uh, I immediately had to mute you. Um, the other forklift guy walked right up to me with the recently repaired forklift and it's about ready to fly apart. So, oh. so I had to, uh, I couldn't come back in until now I was saving my last break for the pre-chat. So I'm on break for a couple minutes here before I have to go back in for a few minutes and clock out. But, uh, yeah, I've been ha having a lot of forklift stuff go on in the past two days. <laughs> So does the forklift guy chase you around still on Tuesday nights when you're trying to talk and, and make the obnoxious backup beeper go off? Yes, but now he knows that if the wheel falls off the forklift, you don't keep driving it like it's a plow across the what? factory floor and gouge right through the concrete and just do further damage to the truck. That sounds more like the words of a fun hater. Just saying. Uh, that just sounds like a not smart thing to do all the way around. Yeah, and... and yeah. What scares me is the fact that somebody that needs to be told that actually got a forklift license. Oh, it, it gets better than that. The new plant manager walks up five minutes after uh, sees this forklift broke down in the middle of the warehouse, gouging the floor, and this trail of debris that runs from the factory out to the warehouse and goes, what happened? And we tell him, and we tell him what we got to do to fix it, and we're trying to, to raise the thing up and get blocks underneath it and do all this other work. And the guy who wrecked the forklift jumps on the other forklift, and the floor supervisor doesn't do anything. The new plant manager doesn't do anything. The, nobody does. And I'm like, guys, I think he needs remedial training. That's what you're supposed to do after an incident. <laughs> I realized that this wasn't 100% his fault, but he did say, well, it was wobbling, but I kept driving it. And, oh, and they just let him go. So it's no wonder that, that uh, the forklift that he wrecked last night that they fixed this morning is now broke again. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. Where's Ocean uh, when you need him? Uh, All right. Well, we are glad to have you, and uh, I'm glad that you can take a break uh, just, just up until the point where you have to go back in and clock out and leave. That sounds like my kind of job. So uh, Yeah, well, when you're in maintenance, you can't take a regular scheduled break. You have to take them when you can get them, and sometimes – you end up working through your break. It comes with a job. If you don't like it, go work on the line, right? Yep, I hear that. I hear that. All right. Well, thanks for being here, and uh, we will try and not call on you too much until we know that you are available for the rest of the night. So moving right along. Thank you. Let's say hello to Mr. Jim. And real quick, before we get into too much, I just want to thank Jim. He, uh, he gave us a very uh, nice, hefty donation to the Nebraska Strong uh, PayPal pool a little while ago tonight. So uh, we're, we're going to talk about that here in a minute after everybody's had a chance to say hello. But Jim, I just wanted to thank you honestly from the bottom of my heart on behalf of not just myself, but all of Nebraska. We're going to make sure that that money gets spent to, to help Nebraskans. So thank you. Uh, my pleasure. I know how, I know how hard it was around here when Harvey came. So. Yeah. You've got some good stories or not so good stories Yep, to tell from those days too. So. So, uh, so you haven't been here in a while. We're happy to have you back after a few weeks hiatus from Two A Tuesday. So, uh, what's been going on in your world, and do you have any cool videos that you're going to be throwing up? Oh, so, I should. I don't want to say throwing up like it's a bad thing. I should throw up some cool videos. Uh, maybe just regurgitating videos left and right. That's right. Maybe I'll, uh, uh, maybe I'll record some videos on April 13th and 14th for Midnight Range. That'll make them happy. He knows what I'm talking about. That'd be cool. Well, just make all of us happy and, and get some get some cool videos out there. So yeah. But but again, thanks for being here, Jim. And uh, can't wait to hear your thoughts on some of the stuff we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. You betcha. All right, Kingpin is in the house, and he's on the Gun Channels chat, on the YouTube chat, right here in the panel. 
and he's out there in that uh, not so uh, free, the little more restrictive state of Maryland. Uh, Maryland with gun laws is kind of like a pair of underwear that's just a little too tight. Nobody likes it. It's just not comfortable for anybody. Yeah, it got a little tighter, and it's going to get even tighter in the next couple weeks. So, uh, don't don't come here. Like, <laughs> visit somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. Uh, Honestly, but, it's really not for anybody. Yeah, it's not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, the landscape it's, it's is really not. It's the really not for anybody. Really beautiful. I mean, there's everything you want. We got a beach. We got mountains. We got rivers. We got whatever you want. But everything is except for the landscape is terrible. It, so don't just just don't come here. Yeah, you cross the bridge in town here that leads, goes across the Potomac from West Virginia to Maryland, and you can just feel the oppression set in. It's, it's horrible. Well, that's horrible. All right, sorry. I can't talk and think and listen and type in the chat. Guitar Man Pete is wanting a link to the PayPal pool, so we will get that posted up here uh, real quick. Let me let me try and find it. Sandhills, I can get it for you if you want me to. You I got it. That? That'd be awesome. Travis, you guys, else got it or so that I got, got it. Yeah, right. we can keep the chat flowing here. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just hashtag Nebraska Strong which is kind of becoming the hashtag for our state all across from one end to the other. So we will, uh, Travis will get that. Oh, Jim has already got it. Yeah, Jim's on so, it. Thanks, Jim. That link is up. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about that here and explain that a little bit better for everybody once we get through the introductions. So, uh, so David, thanks for being here. Uh, anyway, that, that is awesome. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you are doing everything you can to, to try and, and help out your fellow fellow Marylanders, even though the gun laws aren't the best. They're not going to get better if nobody fights for them. So I'm glad for the stuff that you do. All right. We have got Rich White this week unloaded with us tonight. How you doing, folks? Always fun to have Rich's perspective on fun topics, too. And we've got a few latecomers coming in the panel. So we want to say hi to Ghost Tactical. Ghost is the the ghost with the most, and one heck of a cool guy. Let me tell you. You know the uh, checks in the mail, buddy. Uh, thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I get that, a chance to talk concealed carry, I'm happy. Me. What was that? I said, anytime I get to talk concealed carry, I'm happy, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I said a little while ago that we've had a couple uh, some pretty heavy topics lately, and I wanted to have a week where we just. Uh, uh, just have some some not so heavy stuff going on. We'll talk a little bit about concealed carry. This is two A Tuesday, uh, so we'll talk about some some gun stuff, not so much gun law stuff here in a little bit. And we've also got our neighbor to the south, everybody's favorite tactical chicken. We've got Gizzard Gary giving him the bird. Give him the bird. <laughs> Thanks for the invite, man. Yeah, always, always glad to have you. And then last, certainly not least, the closest. Uh, the closest person I have in the panel anyway to a co-host, not counting Sandhill's sweetheart, off to the side here helping out with the chat, is uh, Travis P11, also coming to us from Nebraska, a little bit different part of the state than where I come from. But uh, Travis, what's going on over your way? Well, I'm happy to report that we are dry where we are, but man, it doesn't take long that you have to go far before you see the, uh, the carnage all across the state. It is really bad. Um, but anyway, I do appreciate the invite. So, uh, so real quick, check out the channel, Travis P11 on YouTube. I'm also on guntube.org and Saturday mornings through the month of March, we got a podcast called caliber corner. It's going to be happening 8 a.m. Central time on Saturday mornings over there on gunchannels.com. Get over there and sign up and then caliber corner will be switching to Thursday night. So I'll make an announcement about that here in a couple weeks. But anyway, man, I appreciate the invite. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Yep, yep, absolutely. Thanks for being here. Yep, yep. So real quick here, as I as I try and do this, I'm trying to pull up just maybe some Google image searches here of Nebraska flooding. We'll see if we can do a little bit of a screen share here too. Um, so it doesn't always say where all these are, but we're gonna we're gonna go through and see if I can see if I can do this. What blows my mind is the damage it does to roads. We've got basically towns and communities where people are completely cut off. Unless you've got some sort of a swamp buggy or something, uh, you're really not going to get out of town in your passenger car. 
or SUV yeah. for that matter. I mean, it's really bad. I've never seen it. It literally takes chunks of concrete out of the highway and just throws it on top of each other like a knocked over pile of Jenga, basically. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, we had that here in West Virginia last year. Oh. I don't know if you saw the pictures I posted up on my personal Facebook account last year, but there were parts of the road where that were just washed out in areas. And the, they're still finding damage down there. Like the road that we actually lived on, that we just moved, we moved right after all this happened. The road now, where my mother-in-law still lives back, that road washed out from the damage from last year that they didn't know was damaged. Wow. Just, okay, so the completely fall apart finally. I've been down this road. This is Highway 281, north uh, north central Nebraska. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I do believe that the I do believe that the river is moving from right to left. I think that's the way somebody that's smarter with river currents and ripples tell me if that looks right, but it looks like the current goes from right to left. So we'd be looking looking south down 281. This is the Niagara River Bridge. And right up here off of this would be where Spencer Dam was. This is a picture of what the Spencer Dam looks like now. Damn. It's gone. It blew out. And I don't know how many acre feet of water this thing held back, but it was not a huge dam, but there was that's a pile of water. And so um, there's actually a bar that was down below the dam, between the dam and the highway, that just the whole bar got swept away to the last I heard. Nobody knows where the, the owner is yet. Um, they haven't found him, so it was Angel's Straw Bale Bar. Uh, they actually had quite a few concerts and, and fairly big names for just a just a no name place out in the middle of nowhere in Nebraska. So um, that's just here's some of the some of the damage that we've got going on across. Oh, I don't know where this is. That could be from Nebraska to Wisconsin. Um, but Nebraska is not supposed to look like this, guys. And I know that other states have had flooding issues. You guys have seen it in other places, but. Um, St. Ed, Nebraska, just right out there in the middle of the state. Um, this is only a couple hundred people town, but it's not designed to be floating like that. You know, you know, you can say what you want about, you know, agricultural subsidies and how wealthy farmers are, but the agricultural damage is going to have a huge impact. If you think about the, uh, the food production, a lot of the loss of the cattle is going to be terrible. And a lot of these people, they don't even live on floodplains. These are places that, you're not even you're not rated over be on insurance because it would be considered a floodplain. It's never flooded there in like the history of the entire you yeah, know settlement exactly. of the state. It's never had water, and these people have water up to their roofs. That's what blows my mind. And part of it is also because of the damming system, like you mentioned it before, Sandhills last weekend on Sunday or Saturday. When this stuff breaks, it's exponential. It keeps multiplying on itself and it keeps blowing out everything all over the place. And then eventually it makes its way to the Missouri, and we're starting to see the impact of that now. So, I mean, yeah, you can see that picture right there. What okay, we're talking so about. right where my mouse is, this is Omaha. Uh, this is greater Omaha right here. I believe this might even be – is this where Offutt is right here? I believe it is. Oh, Offutt Air Force Base. Yeah. Offutt Air Force Base where uh, Strategic Air Command is. And this is the Missouri River. This was a month ago, roughly, that this picture was taken. It doesn't say so here, but I've seen this picture come through Facebook a lot. Um, this was, I don't know if it was a day ago now, but just within the last two or three days, this is what the satellite imagery from overhead looks like. All this is now underwater. This is how swollen the river is. And this is, you know, the river here is a good, what, quarter mile, half mile wide. I mean, it's a, it's a big river channel. And, um, now all of this area is, is underwater, huge chunks of Omaha, about half of off at Air Force Base, which is not a small place, is now underwater. It's just it's just crazy. Uh, One of the things that a lot of people don't think about when, when you see flooding like that is when the water goes away, that's just the beginning because of all the debris and all the silt that the, that the yeah. flooding like that brings along. Like right there, just I'm not saying it will, but when that house is not flooded anymore, there could be two or three feet of silt in their front yard that they're going to have to get rid of or how about tree branches and all kinds of other stuff and the concrete from that that road right there that's going to end up in your front yard 
Yeah, yeah we yeah. have we have 14 state highway bridges that are out, and then they don't even know how many county bridges got washed out. I mean, it's going to be and, uh, insane repairing all this stuff. Yeah, another thing that people that said out in the YouTube chat that you heard it was close to a billion in damages. It's going to be over a billion. Yeah, uh, easy. Estimated yeah. just just agriculture losses. Uh, over 500 million in livestock, over 500 million in crops that aren't going to go in in time or at all now uh, because of all the flooding. Yeah, and that, that's not even counting all the damn all the um, cleanup that's going to have to do just from all the raw sewage that's going to back up from the sewers and get mixed in that as well. Yep, the city of Lincoln's on a water, uh, uh, not a water shortage, um, like a water, a wastewater. Uh, limitation or whatever, no washing, yeah. clothes, no washing dishes right now. Um, don't flush the toilet any more than you have to. I mean, this is just this is just some of what's going on. So, all right, we're going to stop with the pictures, but um, okay, so that's why we have started the uh, the money pool that we started. Um, this it's going to take forever to rebuild the roads to uh, you know replace the homes and, and rebuild the towns that need to be rebuilt um, and the the this is just the flooding what I didn't put up pictures of the western half of the state got blasted with the blizzard and a couple feet of snow so we're we're looking at again widespread losses in livestock live uh, people you know having to go out and uh, they're digging cattle out of snow banks um, some of them live, some of them don't. There's cattle wandering around. I saw a picture from Alliance, Nebraska, out in the panhandle of somebody at work. I don't know if this was a bank or what it was, but uh, there was, you know, six, seven head of yearlings uh, cattle just looking in the door saying, hey, what's going on? Is there any place that's, you know, warm and dry we can get to? Um, so and there's wandering around downtown. This is happening all across the state. That snow is going to melt, and it's going to come downstream this way. So the flooding that's going on, it's not, even when the water goes down, <clears throat> there's nothing saying it's not going to end, or it's not going to come back. Yeah, so that, that being said, fun. that's why we have the the PayPal link out there. <clears throat> um, I did just see we've got somebody else has, uh, let me refresh this because I saw another one come through. We've got another contribution. I, as we get these tonight, I want to kind of call them out um, as they happen. So uh midnight range has thrown out a donation um and i don't know if there's a youtube name attached to pedro ortega but thank you very much pedro for helping out that's awesome um, if i know you in the chats as a different name throw that up there uh if you make a donation and we'll make sure that we uh call out the right name that not everybody wants their normal name put up so we'll we'll try to do that for everybody that can um you were talking right, about so, the snow melting. That's what caused our problems here last year. We had a massive snow melt, and then it kept raining and raining and raining after that. Yeah. And real quick, too, before I forget, we had a few other donations uh, from yesterday. Uh, we had uh, Becca Slattery from Northeast Nebraska, um, Red Leg Objective channel from Texas, saw the video and threw some money towards the pool. And then uh, 38 Super Partisan also uh, – threw some money in there too. So thanks everybody for helping out. And uh, uh, like I said, we're going to make sure that your money stays within the state of Nebraska to help people out right here in our state. So we are up to 105 already of our $2,500 goal. And we're hoping to leave this up until the end of the month. If the donations keep coming, then I probably will extend the date. But for now, we're going to leave it through the 31st of March. So I've got a, just just about two weeks left. Uh, to collect the money. Okay, so let's switch gears. Let's talk about some uh, some concealed carry. Hey, we've got some extra people in our panel that I hadn't noticed sneak in here. Let's let everybody say hi real quick. We've got Obnoxious One. Hi, Obnoxious One. Hi, real quick. <laughs> hi. Hi. Okay. And we've also got Double A Armament Nax is joining us too. Hey, John. Um, yeah, um, honestly, I've seen uh, all the flooding and everything is going on. And the snow melt, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. But yeah, I'm just thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, the the whole flooding and the, everything is going on. Wow, yeah. What a yeah. Yeah. what a, some people got hit with blizzard and flooding. 
Yeah, it's what a crab too. sandwich, right? It's been twofold. I know up along the Niobrara River. I don't know other rivers too, but um, Niobrara is close to home for me. And seeing all the pictures of you know ice that is three feet thick and uh, it's just been pushed up you know a mile off the riverbed um, where the ice jam backed up and got pushed around. It's it's just crazy what a little bit of water uh, can do as far as pushing around and the pressure that it creates. Can I can uh, I say part. this? Can yeah. I say this? I I don't believe in hitting women, but if I ever get a hold of Mother Nature, I'm going to punch her in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. All right. So uh, everybody, tune in and pay attention. We might be able to see armament and axes get struck by lightning inside his house tonight. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> One real quick thing to look, but Whenever a dam breaks, the force of that dam breaking can be so strong that it'll reverse the flow of a river. That's how massive amounts of water these dams hold. One of these goes, it is a serious, serious issue. Yep, it is crazy. It is just crazy. Oh, we've got one more coming in. Nice of my computer to let me know. I get an email every time one comes in, so I know how to, I know I need to refresh my feed. Hey, Gizzard Gary, thank you very much for your donation. It is appreciated. I Welcome. feel like we're having a telephone. You know, do you guys ever see like on public television they have that once a year telethon where we start calling you Jerry? Yeah, if we uh, need some entertainment, we can start singing and stuff if you want to, and we can start, yeah. you know. <laughs> we should do that. One of these, maybe not next week, but maybe we need to just have a telethon. There Test you go. Home. Call well, in. We can have hey man, man, we raised money for Nice Right to help get yeah. us concealed carry permit. I'm sure we can save Nebraska. Yeah. yeah a shooting <laughs> telethon, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, I'll go live. 24 hours of shooting. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, a shooting telethon. Come on. All right. So, all right. So, let's uh, let's move over and talk about uh, the whole reason for the chat tonight. Um, I want to keep saying concealed carry, but this isn't just about concealed. So, we've got some stuff going on, and I've kind of got a little bit of an outline drawn up of some of the stuff that I want to talk about. So, um, just real quick, if you guys want to jot down a couple – excuse me, a couple carry do's and don'ts. We'll just kind of go around the horn a little bit and see um, those of you who do have experience carrying uh, do's and don'ts and those of you who don't have a lot of experience. Uh, maybe you have questions. Maybe you do have still some stuff you want to throw out there as far as, as do's and don'ts. But uh, um, we'll just let everybody kind of have a little bit of time. I've just got four or five of each. Uh, so we're going to go with the do's first and, and do the don'ts later. Um, number one, do that I have do carry a gun, especially if it's legal. Uh, don't break the law. That doesn't help anybody. doesn't help us at all, but, uh, do carry a gun. Number two, do find a gun that fits you, fits your hand, one that you can shoot well, because it doesn't matter how cool it looks. If you can't hit where you're aiming, it's more of a liability than an asset. So find one that fits you. Uh, same with holsters. Try a bunch of different holsters. Everybody who's been carrying very long has got a box <laughs> or a drawer, at least one, full of holsters. Maybe a box for each gun um, that you've tried. Some of them you like. Some of them you – they're like shoes. You've got different pairs of shoes or boots for different occasions, different jobs, right? Holsters are the same way, uh, different ways to carry. So um, – but uh, but try different things. Find out what works for you. Don't – there's no one size fits all. There's no one holster fits all. And then um, – with that, also do practice and be safe about it. You know, unload your gun in one room. Go to a different room away from the ammo to practice drawing and reholstering your pistol from, from that holster. Make sure that you know that when you go to reach for it, it's where you think it is. Um, so, and that's going to kind of play into one of the don'ts that I have later on. But those are my do's just off the top of my head. So, uh, let's just start with Travis. Yeah. Um, off the top of your head, I know some of you I might put on the spot here, but no, I got a list of form I just came up with. Um, okay, well, go for it. Yeah, number one, I, oh, these are in no particular order, but number okay. one, do you carry as much as possible because it's like anything you stuff in a pocket or stick behind you or whatnot, you'll get used to it as time goes on. You'll be less conscious of it and be more comfortable with it, like any kind of accessory you add. Like first time I started easing a pocket knife, I kept, you know, kept filling with it, messing with it. Now it's just, now I reach for it when I need it. I kind of forget it's there, but I know it's there. So do carry as much as you possibly can, even in the house, even in the home. That way you're comfortable with sitting down, standing up, breaking in those holsters. Number two, do practice with your carry ammo. 
because it might behave differently from that cheap range ammo you might be shooting with normally. It might have a different kind of recoil impulse. It might, whatever, it just might perform different than what you're used to. It might even be more or less accurate than what you, than what you bulk practice with at the range. Uh, number three is do clean your gun often. It's amazing the amount of crap that builds up in like the, the slides and in the top of the, you know, whatever, just, just lint and stuff like that that gets in there. Just keep your gun clean, uh, clean it often. And uh, do carry a second magazine because, you know, if you've got, like me, I just carry a single stack, you know, EC9S. You've only got about, I don't even know, seven or eight rounds and that's it. Uh, at least have a second mag on standby because you could have multiple salients if you ever need to draw. That's it. Awesome. All right. Speaking of carrying around the house, just for the record, we are, can you see it there? It's always there. Yep, yep. Almost always there. I love my alien gear holster because it's so comfortable. I don't, uh, I don't take it off as soon as I get home the way that some other holsters I do. So, uh, love this holster. Um, just super comfortable. I forget that it's there most of the time, even when, yep. uh, even when I'm carrying my, my Glock 19 in it. Um, cause that's the cool thing about the alien gear. You can swap out the shell and, and uh, you've got lots of holsters, uh, all set up, ready to go. So, but yeah, I forget about that. It's there. So, all right. Uh, Rich, what do's do you have as far as carry goes? And it doesn't have to be just concealed. Like I said, this can apply to open too. All right. Yeah. I think Travis covered a lot of what I was going to say already. Sorry, and, man. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely the one, the one major thing I can think that he said is practice. Make sure you know how that weapon is going to perform if you have to draw it. Like the indoor range I go to, they don't allow you. Most people, you bring in your own ammo now because somebody did something stupid, which is usually what happens, right? Somebody does something stupid, ruins it for everybody. But they will let you take in a magazine or two of your carry ammo so that you can, as long as it's not hand-loaded. So even I've been, the last one I was out there, I had my, uh, well, let me just show you. I had this with me, my 2.0 compact, and I fired off a magazine or two out of my self-defense ammo out of this. Make sure you know what that round is going to do when you're pulling that trigger. Make sure you know where it's going to hit. It might hit high. It might hit low. It might hit to the right. It might hit to the left. Make sure you know where it's going. That's a uh, M and P, correct? Yes, it is. Is that a 2.0 compact? What are you holding yeah. there? Is it or a shield? Yeah, this is a 2.0 compact. Uh, I, I want to try that. that. I love the Glock 19. I want to try that one though too. At least, yes, at least uh, rent one or borrow one sometime and shoot it. All right, so we could get off on side chats all night long with just talking about different guns. One of these weeks, we'll do that too, but there may come a day that we do that, but it is not this day. <coughs> uh, <laughs> I know some of you got that. Okay, so I'm not just, what would you have for, for some dues as far as carrying goes? No. Keep in mind, maybe there's somebody that's actually watching this who – has not carried before maybe is thinking about getting into it so what are some of the do's that maybe um we want to make sure that we tell newbies too as well not just you obnoxious but just everybody on the panel hey are you calling me a newbie uh no i'm calling you a nudie because you're porky pigging it right now probably but don't show us oh, oh, well oh, would you expect anything oh, less oh, anything good. more <laughs> of me no we know no that's cool <laughs> go ahead um my absolute 100% do as far as the carry weapon for me is to put 200 rounds through it and at least a magazine of your carry ammo. That is before absolutely bare minimum before I do, before it goes anywhere but my safe. It gets 200 rounds and then at least a magazine plus one. Because I'll, I'll load it to the, you know, if it's a 15, I'll reload it 15 plus one. So I know what it's like to have one. So I can tell that it's going to function correctly if there's one in the pipe. Uh-huh. And the um, reason that you need to do the 200 rounds through it is what? Just to check function, make sure everything is all right. As uh, Midnight Range has reminded me, you know, with his little comment about my wrists, I've got that... Uh, that Dan Wesson that will never be a carry weapon for me because I've had problem upon problem with that. And I can't get through my 200 rounds without a problem. So well, that it, is, it, that is, my, 
it's midnight range. Come on. Yeah. Are you going to take him seriously? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, no, I, I never, <laughs> never. Except I was hope. I was hoping he told me he put on an orange shirt once and he burst and it burst into flame. So I was hoping that was true, but that was probably a lie as well. Um, but that is my 100% must do. If you're going, if you're going to carry it and it, it's going to vary, you know, for somebody else may be comfortable with a hundred rounds, but I got I have to have 200 rounds through it without any malfunctions. And then a, and then at least, you know, the magazine plus one of the carry ammo. Okay. Make sure that Good it's going to, it's going to operate because so many people just get them and they go out, they get a, they get a new gun and they load it up, put it in their holster and go out. That'd be kind of like buying a brand new car and driving away from the dealership on a cross country road trip, right? Without making sure that that it's mechanically sound or buying a brand new no, pair of hiking boots and no, go because if, mile walk without breaking them in first, we don't, we don't if, do that. If we your car breaks sure. down, if your car breaks down, you can call a tow truck. That's true. If you need to pull out your gun and your gun breaks down, it's probably not a tow truck that's going to get called. That's true. And it's even more serious than that. So you're right. You're right. So, all right. Any other dues besides make sure that, uh, that it's you've gone through that that break-in period or to make sure that to make sure that uh, it's going to function for you. Anything else? Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's have very fun, good. Have deal. fun with it. That should be on have all fun with list. it. You know, it's not. It's it's yes. It's a tool that we use to um, that we hopefully will never have to use um, to defend our lives or defend the lives of somebody else. But it's also something that i think most of us like to go out and do is to go out and shoot them so you got yeah you, you got to put that 200 rounds through it enjoy it have fun with it just make sure that it's capable of putting out make sure it goes bang when you when you want it to go bang sure sure and after that 200 you still want to shoot it every once in a while i want to yeah. shoot it all the time come on <laughs> then if it's got ammo in it, you want to periodically shoot that ammo and put fresh ammo in there. I just want to shoot all the time, so, you know. Well, you got to put it away every once in a while. <laughs> well, if I put that one away, I'll get something else out and shoot it. I just want to shoot all the time. I can't afford to shoot how much I want to shoot. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, then. <laughs> gonna be That's hard why to I reload. It, it, I, I can't even afford that, right? <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm trying to resize my windows here. Get everything. Hey, uh, Mr. Uh, the Rich White Guy, um, didn't you just get a uh, new little toy, the G2C? Yeah, I got the G2C. I got that sitting right here, too, by the way. Sweet. How, how's that doing? Yeah, it worked. It was a decent shooter. Had it out at the rain uh, Sunday as well. My wife liked it. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, nice cool. little, nice little shooter for what I mean. I paid less than two hundred with veteran discount, so I mean it was, yeah, it was a good little gun, twelve rounds in the mag, and then one in the chamber, like obnoxious was saying. Yeah, I'm I'm carrying the uh, PT one eleven G two. I'm <coughs> doing good. I think I got over twelve hundred through it now. We made a video of the uh, thousand rounds through it, but the thing works. It I I don't know. I'm I'm not complaining. The thing is pretty dang accurate, and you know, yeah. the cool. Your wife likes it. For some reason, though, she didn't like the Rough Rider. I don't know why. All right. Well, let's go back to some dues here, fellas. So we'll move on to Kingpin. I know you don't have a ton of experience carrying Kingpin, but I know you've done it a little bit, and you've you've thought about it even more. I'm sure. So, uh, what would you put on your list of dues? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you and go the first thing at the top of the do list is follow all the laws where you live at and follow all the laws where you're going to go. Uh, and then being uh, being the newbie, uh, I don't mind having that label put on me. I'm not like obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, pretty Nobody much is. Nobody is, brother. Everybody in this panel has pretty much told me the same thing. And uh, probably, you know, Travis and Ghost the most. Uh, didn't mean the rhyme there, but practice. 
practice, practice, practice. And, and even for me, I don't have a carry permit, but at least a couple times a week, I practice carrying around my house and I practice drawing and all that kind of stuff. So if there's ever a situation where, you know, Maryland decides not to be uh, as crazy as it is and, and allows people to get carry permits, I'll be a little bit more proficient. So, yeah, definitely practice as much as you can and follow all the rules and regulations where you're at and where you're going. Yeah, a midnight range throws out one particularly for you, David. He says, do move out of Maryland. <laughs> I was going to mention that one. That may be the smartest thing Midnight's ever said. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we tell people that all the time. Same with California. You know, get out of California while you can. But, you know, like I said earlier, if everybody moves out of Maryland except for the anti-gunners, then we know that when legislation comes up, the Maryland senators, the Maryland Congress people, we know how they're going to vote. We don't have a chance. So why not have people like Kingpin still be there and just try and, and educate and raise awareness that guns aren't evil. They're not good. They're inanimate objects with, you know, that with no moral qualities to them, no more than a hammer. Um, you know, people can kill people with a hammer. People can build things and do good work with a hammer. Same thing is true of firearms. And if David doesn't tell people about that, then who's going to in Maryland? You know, so, I, I, I just saying the same thing. I'm, I'm looking at all this gun violence. It's not gun violence. It's just violence. It's violence. evil doing evil. Really? It's violence. It's no different than yes. you know, a, a hate crime. Well, no, crime is crime and it's terrible. Yep. Yep. And why is it that, uh, you know, if, if I lose somebody in my family to uh, a white person, um, why is that any less of a crime or any, any less tragic than if somebody who's not white loses a family member to a white person? I don't get it. I don't understand hate crimes, hate speech. Um, when people do ugly things to other people, it's a crime. We have laws against it. It's bad. We don't want people doing ugly things to ourselves, uh, to us or our, or our families, and that's why we carry. So just as simple as that. So, all right, moving along with the do's. We've got Jim up next. Jim, do's as far as carry go? Uh, what hasn't been mentioned yet? Do get a good belt. Very uh, good. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be some tactical belt but they make good uh, solid heavy leather belts that you can use for holsters as well and so do that and do try to find a place to shoot if you can that isn't straight down a, a indoor range uh, squared up against a piece of paper if you can get outside and sweat a little and have some wind and dirt and barriers to duck behind and shoot around. That sort of thing is, is it's good. And I get, and that gets you beyond carrying specifically, but in the, in the whole thing of practice, that's, that's a good thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that we can all pretty well agree with practice is definitely going to be a, gonna be a good one. So, all right, Gary, I know you, uh, exercises a lot of a lot of different uh cool guns down there in kansas that you get to carry and you don't even need a permit to do it within your state so i i'm hoping you've got a little experience with this now so what would you say for dues oh uh, well a couple things if you get a chance uh take some training even if it's just a concealed carry class uh it's a they bring up some good things in that class as far as the law goes, you know, it was mentioned before about learning your laws. And to go along with the law, think very seriously about getting some uh, concealed carry insurance. Also not a bad so, idea. So you're not totally financially wiped down in case something happens. And, uh, and also, um, I know Kingpin mentioned this too, but not just the laws in your state, but learn the laws where you're going. If, if you live in an area where you regularly cross state lines or you could find out if you can carry across that state line, find out the laws in that state 
I know in Nebraska, we've actually got more restrictive laws than some of the states around us. So if I go to South Dakota, I can carry in church. I can carry in a hospital. There's no law against it there. Can't do it here in my state. So um, it's kind of nice. It's weird to to be in South Dakota and go to church service, to have my carry piece on me. Nobody knows it's there. Nobody cares about it. But at the same time, uh, they don't know it's there either. But um, it's just kind of weird being able to do that in some jurisdictions that I can't, you know, exercise some freedoms in other states I don't even have here. So that's pretty neat. So, all right. Good stuff, Gary. All right. Ghost, I'm hoping that you're going to have some cool stuff to tell us too. <laughs> well, I might have some dark stuff, but uh, you know, I think I think we can all say that there's three things you should always do. Carry every day, learn the laws of where you're going to be carrying, and get training. Those are the gimmies that everyone should have on their list. But I'm going to go with a few other things also. Do your research on what gun you're going to buy. Don't take anyone's word for it, especially the so-called experts. Do your own research. Handle as many guns as you can to find the gun that's right for you. The second thing you do want to do is dry fire every day. Dry fire for at least 10 minutes every night from the draw so that you're comfortable, re not just from the draw, but also moving the concealment garment if you're going to do concealed carry. Always be proficient at moving that garment. And three is going to get real dark, but it's some of the best uh, advice I've ever received in my life. If you're going to take the responsibility to carry every day, please go set up your last will and testament and also go ahead and schedule how your funeral is going to be. And this is not a joke at all. This is 100% serious because if you're going to take it seriously and you're ever put in that situation where you might not come home, the last thing you want to do is have your loved ones on the worst day of their lives have to plan your funeral. So I know it's a dark thought, but if you're going to take it seriously and be a warrior out there, it's something that you also need to consider. No, not, not bad advice, not bad advice at all. And yeah, I understand where you're coming from there. So um, this is, it's serious business. You know, we can make light of it and we can, in good natured fun, we can, uh, you know, we can tease each other about this gun or that caliber or whatever. But at the end of the day, this is serious business. Um, those of you who've never carried, I can tell you from, from my own personal experience, just having that extra pound or two on your, on your hip or wherever you carry it, um, there's, there's some serious weight that comes with that one or two pounds. Um, just knowing that you have the power to not only keep yourself or your family safe, but at the same time, you have the power to use justifiable lethal force and the means to do it. Um, if it's not a sobering thought until you get, at least until you get used to it, I don't think about it all the time now, but it's always there in the back of my mind, not in the front so much as it used to be, but just if that's not a sobering thought, then maybe you should give a second thought to carrying in the first place. Um, you know, just knowing the fact that, you know, you, you carry because you don't want to take a life, but you're willing to do it if you don't have any other option to do it. That That's a sobering thought. And that's can, I ask, a thought. can I ask you a quick question real quick? Uh, maybe yeah. uh, the people on the panel that have experience carrying every day, or maybe uh, this would be a good question for Ghost. But I guess most of us probably think about shooting in you guys were talking about you know darkness and light and i know it was a different subject but going to use those words most of your assailants are probably going to accost you at night and as far as i understand most people are used to shooting at the range during the day so you know you have sunlight and all kinds of ambient light around and stuff like that what kind of practice would you guys recommend for real life situation a really dark parking lot on a rainy night or something like how could you practice for a real low light situation um i, I do several things every week um and I, I might take it a little bit more seriously than others and people might say that it, i take it maybe too seriously but uh every week i will go out to uh, my driveway with an empty mag and I'll do dry fire practicing getting out of my car, getting into my car uh, and all that. Most importantly for the home, um, at least once a month, I don't say I do it every week cause I'd be lying, but at least once a month, if not twice a month, 
I do a clean sweep of my house uh, in, a, in, a, in night conditions when we, 2 o'clock in the morning because when you wake up, understand, if, if there's an intruder in your house at 2 o'clock in the morning, first of all, you're not going to be alert and awake. It's going to take you a second to kind of gain where you are, what you're looking at. But understand one thing. You know your house better than anyone else out there. So I keep all my lights off of my house because I know I can walk out into a living room in pitch black and know where the furniture is. And it sounds crazy, but I do a sweep of every room and every place in my house at least once or twice a month so that I can do it in the dark and not have to think about it. That's awesome. And to add what Ghost was saying, if you have a range with the facilities to be able to do it, train on the Milo course. Ghost, you did that, what, a shot last year? absolutely yeah they the local range of here they have it my wife and i wanted to, we're planning on doing that sometime soon but that's a great training tool and there are a lot of schools and that will have low light training and they'll actually train you how to um fire your weapon and handle your weapon in low light situations as well so you might want to think about that as well now david you're not making a reference to like the ammo and the flash from the ammo are you is that what you're talking about with low light also or not is that a question that you had, like how the gun is going to, because, you know, I've heard that the critical defense ammo has a low flash powder. So it's designed for, if you have to discharge in a low light situation, you're not going to be blinded by it. Well, yeah, that was, that was part of it, but most uh -huh. of it was just, you know, being able to draw and turn around and see yeah. what you're looking at, like actual, yeah. you know, just natural human vision in the dark. Don't Course you would have to take in the muzzle flash and stuff like that. And the don't discount the muzzle flash thing, though. I've never, I've never fired a gun. I don't think in full on darkness. But I've been out just, you know, target shooting or whatever when the sun was going down and it's starting to get a little dark. And just in that, you know, you can still see the sun's down, but it's not dark yet. the The muzzle flash is crazy bright at that point. Um, and I don't know that there's a way. Uh, those of you who've done extensive training especially training more at night you can tell me this um patriot you're exempt from answering this but um when you when you uh when you shoot a gun in low light or no light um nothing can really prepare you for that um that you know that flash that experience other than just go do it uh find a range that will allow you to do some low light shooting or or you know shooting in the dark even with a flashlight what have you um, there's nothing that'll prepare you for that. I don't think besides just doing it. Um, but it's something that everybody should be prepared for. If you're, you know, clearing your house or clearing a room and it's, you know, not super bright. You guys know how I feel about leaving your house dark when you clear it, turn on every light in the house. Uh, it just makes it easier when the police do show up, they can see everybody too. But, uh, still, if you're someplace where there's not much light and you have to fire that, that handgun or that rifle, whatever it is, it's going to be brighter than you think it is, even with low flash powder. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was just going to say the muzzle flash is blinding and pitch black. It's blinding. Yeah. 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 One thing I'll do is when we go to the indoor range, I'll turn, you know, if, when you go to indoor range, how they have that little light just for the station you're at. I'll turn that little light off so that you can see that flash more vividly. And the, the indoor ranges tend to be darker than what they would be for shooting outdoors. So you get more of that flash if you're doing that than if you were shooting outdoors. At least during the day, anyway. Now, out there in the chat, Patreon of the Dark says he just closes one eye, and that doesn't screw up his night vision, uh, which is awesome. For those of you who don't know Patreon in the Dark, he is our resident blind guy and uh, also has a sick sense of humor like mine, and I love it when you say stuff like that, Patriot. Don't stop. Well, here's the thing. He's not factually wrong. But one of the reasons why pirates wore eye patches wasn't necessarily because they were missing an eye. They would wear an eye patch over one eye, and then they would flip to the other eye. So when they went down below decks, because they weren't always well lit, they could see better out of the one eye than they could if they had both eyes open. Oh, well, makes sense if you think about it. Arr. All right, let's all get eye patches and be pirates. Arr. That's some serious Jeopardy knowledge right there, man. <laughs> Arg. Arg. You never know what kind of knowledge you're going to get on a two-way Tuesday chat. Aren't you glad it's not the closer, huh? You're, 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 you're assuming that Rick is, you don't walk that, that Arg. You're not glad it's the closer. Arg. 
Arg. It's Arg, you glad it's not the closer? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's how pirates say orange. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're assuming that Rich is telling the truth and not just blowing smoke out his rear end. That Jeopardy knowledge, as you put it, comes from my second. Well, no, I mean, every pirate I've ever met, it's that's what they've told me, too. So, you know, I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying. My, my second minor in <laughs> college was history, so I, I know a little stupid stories. Like there that. you go. All right. So we've got two more people on the panel here we're going to get to for dues. Ghost, uh, excuse me, ghost. We just talked to ghost. Uh, forklift, squib, squib lift. Um, are you available to talk yet? And do you have any carry dues that you want to add or something that you'd like to reiterate? Uh, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. I mean, everything that was said was either common sense or opinion. So I got nothing. Okay. All right. No common sense or opinion from squib lift. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> What forklift guy? What did you do with the real squib? Actually, here's what happened: squib got fed up with forklift guy, snapped, and took over his channel. But squib doesn't have an opinion. <laughs> I, I I find that suspicious. <laughs> All right. Yeah, didn't didn't you do a whole video about being the guy to to kind of fill in when there's that dead space? I thought that's what the whole you know what where is that? Where's that squib we used to know? What? I'm, I'm not going to tell you the things that I do when I carry and to say, well, this is what you have to do because I do it. So no, nobody's whatever. saying that. Well, nobody's that's opinion. Just because we say <laughs> that you need to do it. But think about, you know, there's there's maybe somebody out in the panel or, excuse me, in the chat side or maybe somebody's going to catch this on a replay who does have some serious questions about getting into carrying, wants to know some do's and don'ts from people who've been there and and done that and if there's anything you want to throw in there feel free uh this is all of our mostly our opinion this is all what works for us as far as the do's go we'll get to the don'ts here in a little bit but sometimes we can learn from other people's experiences sometimes we have to experience it for ourselves before we learn but why not get all the info out that we can so that's that's what we're doing so all right we will let squib go for it for now at that if there's anything you do want to throw in there later, of course, you know you're welcome to do it, Squib. Uh, double A, anything that you want to throw in there that hasn't been said or maybe has? Uh, I'm just saying um, dues, carry every day. Be be protected. Um, don'ts. Um, don't, don't be a victim. We'll get to don'ts here in a little bit. Yeah, just don't be a victim. Carry every day. Practice with what you carry. Be proficient with what you carry. Practice with what you carry. Other than that, I what what else? Yeah, really, just you know, whatever you decide to carry, practice with it. Be proficient. Absolutely. Sand Hills. Yes. I thought of a common sense do that everybody already knows. Anyhow, go ahead. Do try to do everything reasonable in your power to avoid using the threat of deadly force or using deadly force. That is a, you know, that's not necessarily common sense, Squib, and that is excellent advice. Um, I wish I had thought of it, actually. Actually, I, I hope I never, ever, ever, ever have to draw my gun. I, I think that goes for everybody on, on our panel and prob hopefully everybody in our chat, too, who does carry. Nobody wants to take a life. Nope. Nobody wants to have to use their firearm uh, against, you know, another human being. But, again, it goes into preparedness, right? If, if I'm back yep. in that corner and I don't have a, a different option, I'm prepared to do what I need to do up to and including taking a life to protect my family or protect myself. Um, I don't want it to get that far. I'll do everything in my power. Um, you know, I've, I've said before, I mean, I'm the guy who's never been in a fist fight. My mouth has gotten me out of any situation it's gotten me into my whole life. Uh, I'd like to keep it that way. But if I don't, if I can't, then, yeah. Um, um, but I've carrying been, a I've, firearm is, is kind of like practicing martial arts. Yeah, um, I, I was just going to say, I've, I've been a one or two fist fights, not a lot, and I tried to avoid them. And, yes, I was a martial artist and blah, blah, blah. And yet, yet, yeah. Look, it's like this. Um if you're a martial artist or a gun carrier, and it, it's simple, most people are dumb, and they don't know how to fight, but as a martial artist, you know how to go, I'm going to stop this with one or two blows. 
And I'm, dude, dude, I'm not a, I'm not a badass. I, I will never claim to be a badass. I'm not bragging. I'm a badass. You see what I'm saying, though. You learn a technique and know how to stop a threat. Yep. And, and that. From that, from that can come a confidence of knowing that, you know, you're as prepared as as you can be for for a threat, right? We know that we can't prepare yes. for everything, but try to be as prepared as we can be. Um, and a lot of that comes in the mindset. So do think about if you're willing to use your gun on another human, because having the mindset is over half of the battle, right? The, the greatest weapon that we own sits between our ears. And so um, make sure that you exercise that weapon as well, including, you know, situational awareness. Just avoid being put in that position if you can. Talk your way out of it if you if you can't. Exactly. You know, that that's what I was saying. As, you know, growing up, training as a martial artist, uh, dude, I, I don't, I really don't like hurting people. I really don't. <laughs> um, I, you know, it, but, you know, you, you get to a point where you go, okay, let's see if we can reason our way out of this. And certain circumstances, situations that uh -huh. whatever tool or weapon you have in your possession might be the only thing that's going to stop that. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, I God, I'm a I'm a peace dude. I really hate conflict. I really I don't want to hurt anybody, but when somebody's trying to hurt you or your loved ones or people that yeah, what what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yep, exactly. Okay. So let's move now to a list of don'ts and I will start these off again. Um, this is again, these are my personal opinions. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to carry or thinking about getting into it, just because I say it or anybody on this panel says it doesn't mean it's by any stretch of, of the imagination, um, the final word, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to, I, I want to come back to this subject after we go th back through the, through the room here. But uh, the first don't that I have is don't carry with an empty chamber. Make sure that you carry with a loaded chamber. But we're going to discuss that here in a little bit. So don't get too far. Nobody get too much into that part. We'll come back to it, okay? Um, don't keep fiddling with your gun. Uh, don't keep touching it. Make sure it's there. Make sure it hasn't slipped. That goes back to getting the right holster. The right holster won't slip. It won't shift. It won't move. The gun's not going to fall out of it. Um, if you spend 10 bucks on a holster, then you're probably going to be touching it a lot. And then it's not so concealed. People are going to know that you're fiddling with something. So try to get something that holds it where it's supposed to be. And then you don't have to keep touching it. And I know when you're new to carry, you, you just have that, um, you just have that instinct to, to do that. You've got to try and resist as much as you can, because nobody's going to see it if you don't call their attention to it yourself. Don't use a cheap holster. I said that. <clears throat> um, don't assume that the gun is loaded. Don't assume that the gun is unloaded either. Uh, we don't assume. That's why every time somebody hands us a gun, we check the chamber, right? Even though they just cycled the action, we're going to do the same thing for ourselves. <clears throat> we will do a visual, if we can, uh, inspection, tactile inspection if we need to. I know Patriot in the Dark is always good about... Um, showing how he checks to see if a firearm is, is loaded or not in, in his videos, um, you know, using his uh, fingertip or whatever, a pinky, uh, to actually put the finger into the chamber and make sure that there's not a round in there. So um, we'll do that or we'll just do a visual inspection if that is an option for us. And then also another one that we could probably have a whole chat on this if we wanted to, um, don't shame somebody based on what gun they're carrying or what caliber their gun is chambered in. Good uh, Lord, thank if, you. If I had, and I know they don't make this, but if I had to choose between fighting off an attacker with a rock or a high point and 22 long rifle, give me that high point 22. I know. Hell, yeah. Hell yes. Hell well, yes. you know what? If you would have yep. said CPX2, yep. you would have had that first fight with me, bro. <laughs> Let's just say that right now. But, but, but can we? Rock I was talking about. What, what, what about this? Can we all agree that nine millimeter leads to Nazis? Um, we can't agree that it leads to Nazis because I have no Nazi tendencies. And no, I'll, I also I'll have... probably kill Nazis with a nine millimeter, but 
yeah, anyway. Yeah, there were. I don't want to kill Nazis. I don't want to kill anybody. I, I don't want to kill you. anybody either. I just saying that that nine millimeter leads to Nazi. What? Yeah, no, no. no well, no. there was nine millimeter. The Germans the, the, invented nine millimeter, and then they then they then we got Nazis. So okay, I mean, uh, well, how do you explain the Browning high power? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> That, I just I had a I that, had a cool that's like a weird offshoot, but anyway that nobody picked up on, and I said I don't want to kill anyone. I just can't stand bullies. Oh, really? You either? <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 not a big fan of bullies, and it's funny because back in school I grew a little bit faster than some other people, and I had some younger friends that were little guys, and they got bullied, and I. You know, I, like I said, never claimed to be a badass. I just went, what are you picking on them guys for? And then bullies went, oh, shit. Hey. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. like, I'll put his name up on the board right now. Yep. Put a mark next to his on name. The, yep, yep. Three check marks here out of the chat. One more time you get 15 minutes after class. Yep. <laughs> now don't laugh at me, son. I will put you in ISS so quickly. Yeah, you, you got the tension, mister. Look at that. Look at the wow. side chat. Look at that right there. So so made, the, other made the, list, teacher, the other teacher, uh, in the room, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Sweetheart says, I haven't been following the chat that close, apparently. She's got two people in timeout tonight. Mm -hmm. So keep your chat clean, guys, out there, all of you. Keep it clean. Get out of the panel. So, <laughs> she, all right. She so, didn't mute me, did she? I don't know. Hi, sweetheart. She you're did. not muted. No, I think actually in the chat. I'll I fix that. You. There you go. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Three people just trying to mute you at once. Okay, by the way, any other any other don'ts that you want to throw out there before we uh, we'll unmute you, and uh, any other don'ts you want to throw out before we move on to the next person? Uh, wait, wait, oh, wait! Don't mute me, bro. Don't don't mute Double A. What'd you say? Uh, any no's before? Any other don'ts that you want to get that you want to throw out there before we move to the next person? Uh. Don't be an asshole. Don't. Hey, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, if I have don't, to don't be an asshole. <laughs> don't be an asshole. Oh my god. Um, don't All go right. unguarded. I got don't, this. There. Don't. Done. Don't All be right. a novice. Don't be naive. Realize that the world is a really crappy place, and you better go guarded. Carry. Carry often. Practice with what you carry. Go out and shoot a lot and practice with what you carry. We're doing don'ts, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will move right along. Squib, I know that some of the stuff you think is common sense. Uh, but, again, we've got people, hopefully, who are listening who they don't know what they don't know yet, right? So um, let's uh, – if there's anything you want to throw out there for don'ts, go ahead and do so. Uh. Don't open carry if you're conceal carrying. Don't conceal carry if you're open carrying. <laughs> you know, that actually is sound advice. And some states allow for one and not the other, right? So be careful. Well, that. yeah, I mean, they, they allow for one and not the other. Or you do one with a permit and you do one without. Or you need a permit for both. And depending on how the laws are written... You know, uh, you could be considered open carrying when you're concealed carrying because your shirt doesn't fit or something. Yeah, I mean, and we all have heard stories about people getting arrested for quote unquote open carrying, where in a state where that's illegal because their shirt, yeah, printed or their their gun printed through their shirt because it was too tight or something, or they bent just wrong. So yeah. Um, Keep that in mind. That goes back to the do know your laws, right? But uh, yeah, don't uh, don't make don't make a mistake like that and let that put you to jail. Good advice. All right. Any others? Mm, no. All right. Well, we'll move over to Ghost. What don'ts would you throw out to people, uh, experienced or experienced? Don't touch. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. Don't touch. Whether you're whether you have a good holster or not, don't fidget with your gun. You don't want to bring attention to it. That's one. Two, 
don't think that everyone is looking at you, knowing that you're caring. Don't be paranoid. There's so many people that think that, oh my goodness, everyone knows that I'm caring. They, they can see my gun through my 14 layers of, of sweaters. You know that No, they can't. Be confident. Understand that if they do notice that you're caring, the worst thing that could happen is it could start an awesome discussion. So don't be paranoid about people looking at you, looking at your hip. People don't walk through this world looking at people's hip to see who's carrying a gun. That's just reality. And most importantly, three, I would say, um, don't try to be a hero. And it kind of goes on to say, don't go looking for a fight. Don't try to escalate a situation because you want to be a cowboy in the Wild West. If you go home every single day, never having to have to pull your gun, that's a successful day. So don't try to be a hero. That's all I got. Awesome. Good advice. All right. Gizzard, any don'ts that you would throw out there? Don't drink if you're carrying. Don't carry if you're going to drink. Amen. Amen. And that is also a law in a lot of states. It's a law in this state. Yep. I don't know about open carry, honestly, but if you're concealed carrying in Nebraska, zero tolerance for alcohol in your blood. And again, that'd be a number one item you'd have to watch out if something ever happened and there's you know some sort of a prosecution or some sort of some sort of investigation. It's not going to be in your favor if you were slamming shots before you drew your weapon, even if it was a justified self defense shot. Yeah, that's uh, not it's gonna not going to help you. It, it might not help the civil liability either, because that's the second half of it you got to deal with, especially in Nebraska with their bass Ackwards laws. Yeah, I so, guarantee I that every time a, <laughs> uh, every time that there is a round shot anywhere, there's going to be an investigation, and one of the first things they're going to do is check your blood alcohol content. Yeah. And you don't have to be legally drunk; it's not drunk driving. If you have any alcohol in the system, that could really screw you. Yep, exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, Hill Climb, we will cover that here in a second. Um, he's got a great question out there. We'll come back around to that as well. So everybody let uh, help me remember to come back to Hill Climb's question out there about helping someone in distress. That's a great topic to get into. So, all right, we will move. Uh, Gary, did you have anything else you wanted to throw in there? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Jim, we'll go to you. Uh, I think Ghost was covering a little bit of this when I when I picked my headphones back up, but uh, don't be Michael D Dredgka. Uh, it, you're you're a concealed carrier for defense of yourself and your family. You're you're not a cop. You're not there to enforce uh, handicap spots or anything like that. Right. Uh, mind your own business. Be situationally aware and stay out of trouble. Uh, beyond that, I would generally say don't open carry unless there's some sort of reason you're you know at a family you know you, you're doing the barbecue gun thing or maybe at a rally but just day to day i wouldn't i would just say don't open carry be the gray man and that's another topic that i kind of want to get to we'll see if we have um see if we have time to get into all this stuff um but yeah that that's something we hopefully can circle back around to here a little bit um Hey, Sandy. Yeah. Sandy, you know Hill Climb is my son, right? I, I know Hill Climb is your son. Okay. I, you mentioned him. I'm like, I had to jump back to the YouTube and see what he said. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nope. I'm aware. And and welcome, Hill Climb and Agorizer, Seven Wonders, Keith Gregory, Poor Conservative, and Leo Red, Freedom for All. I know I've skipped a lot of people, but glad everybody's out here. The chat's been nice and lively, and I like that. So, okay, obnoxious, what do you want to throw in uh, the mix as far as don'ts? Um, well, first don't is going to go back to my do, and that is don't pick up your brand new gun at the at the gun store and immediately load it up, put it in your holster, and go out. That's, that's, I can't, that's why it's my do and my don't, because sure. I can't stress that enough. Um, my, my, other don't besides that is don't skimp on your holster. Yeah. Spend get the best holster that you can afford for that gun. And again, because I would just piggyback on top of that with don't get one holster to do every job because again, just like not every pair of shoes or not every pair of gloves does the same job just as well. Holsters are sometimes specialized as well. So, yeah, 
if you're if you're going to use it, you know, if you're going to have a, if you're going to have a firearm on you while you go for a run, that's going to necessitate a different holster than, you know, your every second matters holster or right. your or your everyday carry holster or your deep concealment holster. But exactly. don't don't skimp on any one of those because that's what's holding it there on your waist or wherever you want to carry it. And it's what you need to depend on next to your gun. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. Very excellent. All right. Anything else you want to put in there? Uh, no. Okay. That's All it. right, Rich, we'll go to you with right. some don'ts. This is one I find myself subconsciously guilty of doing at times. Don't use your handgun as a thumb rest. I will find myself just subconsciously just having my thumb just sitting there on my firearm as I'm sitting there or standing or doing something. You know, don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and you know, now that you mentioned that, I I find myself doing that sometimes. Um, I also have a tendency just to put my hands on my hips or right above my belt and maybe hook a thumb into a belt. Yep, that's why I do it because that's what I would. If I'm standing here, I'm thinking about something. I'll be sitting with my hand in my hip or something but when you're when where i carry my handgun my thumb is resting on the handgun and it's making it toward a handgun or printing a shirt i've i've tried to uh i haven't completely quit that habit what i have done is instead of uh hooking my thumb or or you know the palm of my hand on on the uh the beaver tail area or the back of the slide area or the the corner of the butt um now i'll just go ahead and, and put my put my hand on my hip and my thumb right on my belt right behind the holster and it doesn't you know it doesn't make the gun print through my shirt number one and it doesn't call any attention to the fact that you know my hand is not at belt level it's at you know grip level on on a handgun that that for me has worked um but then i when i'm at work i typically have a bag you know sure it's not that that big of an issue or in the summertime we have to tuck our shirts but i have a tuckable holster too so <clears throat> All right. Any other don'ts you want to put in there, Rich? Don't assume that one handgun is going to fit every situation that you may find yourself in. You may find yourself going to church if your church law or your state laws allow you to carry in a church. You don't want to be carrying a full size Glock 17, a Smith and Wesson 686 plus, what have you. You might want to find yourself a smaller, more concealable pistol like a MMP Shield, a Taurus G2C. Something in 380, something along those lines. When you're hunting, you don't want to be on Converse. You don't want to be carrying a PPK in say 32 Auto. So make sure you're you have a firearm that's going to fit the situation that you're going in. So in other words, get multiple firearms, folks. They don't all have to be the same caliber, but make sure you have something that's going to fit the situation you're going to find yourself in, as far as clothing and whatnot. Absolutely. And let me just say that uh, that PPK in 32. If it's good enough for 007, it's good enough for me. I'm just saying. Yeah, you might be able to take down a helicopter with it, <laughs> but an elk might want have might pose an argument. Bob yeah, would place that shot perfectly every time with that short barrel, and the, he'd have the suppressor on it though too. But uh, only Bond could do that. So, <laughs> all right. Any other don'ts you want to uh, put on the list? That's about it. Everybody else pretty much covered everything else I was thinking of. Okay. All right. And Travis, anything new you want to add or yeah. even stuff that people have said, go ahead and if they're on your list, go ahead and well, say if it you're again. in one of those if you're in one of those states that's not constitutional carry, don't forget your wallet because your carry permit's probably in there. Good call. Uh, as I did this afternoon as I ran off to a church meeting. And then the second oh. one is if you only got one gun, obviously carry that gun. If you have multiple guns, don't carry your most prized expensive gun with you as your daily carry. And the only reason why is if you ever have to use it, you might not get it back for a while. If you're lucky. So, you know, you got that $1,100 six-hour nightmare. You got to draw it and use it. It gets confiscated as evidence. It might be on vacation for six months before you get to play with it again. So nothing against carrying something maybe a little bit cheaper, but functional, something you're confident with. Not even cheaper, just something that's not your most prized handgun. And a lot of guys, you know, whatever. That's just kind of my opinion. That's right. Yeah. Well, real quick, to add to Travis's comment about the wallet, even if you're in a constitutional state, don't forget your wallet because it's going to be age restricted. You're going to have to be able to prove that you're 21 or older. <clears throat> or prove that you're a resident of that state. Depending on the state, yeah. Like West Virginia yeah. covers everybody. 
And again, that goes back to do find out your laws. Find out if constitutional carry applies to you if you're not from that state. Yeah, good, good stuff. All right. Anything else, Travis, you want to throw in there? No, man, that's it. I think we got a lot of solid advice on do's and don'ts from everybody on the panel. Lots of good okay. stuff. Yep. All right. Well, I've got my stuff written down, but let's go back up here to um, what Hill Climb was was asking about. And let's let's kind of turn this back into a round table. You know how I like to do it. Just everybody jump in. Um, so as far he said, uh, be, a, be a help for someone in distress. Yes or no. Um, so basically I, I think and he'll climb, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think basically what, what this is meaning is let's say that you are, you know, in the checkout line at, at Walmart or at the grocery store, for whatever reason, something goes down at the grocery store. It could happen, right? That's why we carry everywhere. Um, and you know, you see somebody, um, with with a gun pointed at their head and you're a couple steps away and you have the power to stop that situation do you do it do you insert yourself into that equation do you not do it are we obligated to do it there's a lot of questions that go along with this you know if it's a situation where you feel like that person's life is a moral danger danger then you you should be able to justify having to intervene I guess I'd ask myself the question, if I walk away and something happens, can I live with myself and how I'm going to feel knowing that I could have stopped something or prevented something from happening later on, maybe whether it's somebody wailing on their significant other or, you know, whatever, somebody who's getting in somebody's face, uh, you know, really, you really do need to be very choosy about what you get yourself into, but also think well, about what happens if you don't. We've had this discussion, I think maybe even last week, I, I remember typing something about this, but, um, in the state of Nebraska, it's kind of easier. I, I don't want to say easier, but the state of Nebraska makes it um, kind of cut and dried, I guess, because we're able to use deadly force um, if there is imminent danger of death, serious bodily harm, kidnapping, or rape and that of ourself or somebody um, in our immediate area. So it does cover if you're at the you know, if you're at the 7-Eleven and you're in line and somebody comes in and levels a shotgun at the clerk and says, empty the register, and you believe that that person is about to pull the trigger, um, you know, and it's not just for show, then you, in Nebraska, you are justified using that deadly force to save <clears throat> save that clerk's life or, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't or know. Save anybody, anybody's life. Right. right. It's not somebody, just for, somebody, somebody comes in brandishing a shotgun going, I'm going to shoot somebody. Mm, yeah. That's kind of a fine line. But if they actually have it leveled at somebody and you believe if you don't act that somebody else is going to lose their life, then in the state of Nebraska, that's justified. But yeah. again, it's got to be um, eminent threat of, of this. It can't be, you know, somebody comes in and says, you know, hey, they're, you know, they've got a gun in their waistband. And they're not pointing it at somebody. Well, you can't kill them for that. You know, that's not eminent threat. Um, that goes back to a chat we had here several weeks ago, uh, though, with, you know, people who aren't as physically strong or, you know, as large physically as, as an attacker. You know, sometimes an unarmed attacker can still overpower uh, a smaller or less strong person. So that goes back to, uh, to you know, or multiple attackers. You know, again, that sometimes having that handgun is all the the only thing that makes a difference, right? Um, yeah. But as far as actually jumping in and assisting somebody and using your gun to save somebody else's life or keep them from getting kidnapped or raped also, um, or or just, you know, serious bodily harm, assault, what have you. Um, yeah, I think Travis hit it right on the head. I think that you have, you know, maybe a split second to decide can you live with yourself if you do this? Can you live with yourself if you don't? Right. And it's personal. It's, it's different for everybody. You have to make that decision at that time. Pray that none of us in here and, and nobody that we know ever is put in that position. But if it came to it, I mean, we need to decide um, at that point if we're going to do it, you know, help out or not, right? 
Right. Yeah, I John. think a lot of the a lot of it has to come down to, like you said, can you or can't you? And I don't want to be rude about it because not everyone's cut out for it, honestly. Uh huh. But if you're not able to, then just don't carry. I mean, I'll just be honest. I mean, that's okay, and it's okay for that. You know, we're not going to think less of you because that's a personal thing. Like you said, you have to come to the reality. We all think that we would like to be able to think we could, but there are people that honestly sit there and says, you know what, I, I don't think I could take another life, no matter what the situation is, and that's okay. So just be honest, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it is. Oh, it's definitely okay. Yeah. Go, go, I totally agree. Um, like I was going to say, John, um, you know, let's put ourselves in the situation of somebody comes into the convenience store and yada, yada, and it, None of us want to. None of us want to. We don't want to pull our gun. But cops. But and you're breaking up. You're in and out again, Double A. You were awesome all night until now. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, it's so kind of funny. I, you pause, pause. Cops. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was all rigged. I thought you were Oscar winning moment. Off. I'm like, say it, brother, me? say it. It's like oh commercial break. We're on the edge of our seat. <laughs> what? What? What is it? What is it? What I, is I it? it was, I, I I'll be honest, I thought it was a Captain Kirk dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Oh man. Sometimes the reason to do it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But yeah. no, I, I think we all I think we all know what you were saying, Double A. So, yeah. So yeah. Um, if how you're far the do kind you of person before you actually draw your gun and say no. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it to find self defense as defense of yourself or another? It doesn't specifically mention it has to be a family member. It just says or another. Or right. another. Yes. Or another. Yeah. That goes back to knowing your state laws because I, I've I've got Texas statutes pulled up on my screen right here, and it you know. There's some specific language around defense of self and defense of a third person. And generally speaking in Texas, you the, the same reasons you can use deadly force to defend yourself, you can do the same with uh, a third person. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And there's there's a question that I get asked quite a bit, actually, by people. It's like, well, how do you know if you should use deadly force or not? Yeah. You sh you'll yeah. know. If, yeah, if yeah. you have the least bit inkling to think that it's not a clean shoot, then don't take the shot. Yeah, but you'll right. know. If, if it's 100% without even questioning, you'll have it. But if there's a doubt at all, then don't take the shot. Live to fight another day. Yeah, and what would have happened when we had that uh, Texas church shooting, was it last year? If there yeah. was somebody around who was able to grab his rifle and chase that guy down. The Sutherland Springs shooting. Yeah. Yep. Stephen Williford, the quick-thinking... Uh, NRA certified instructor who grabbed his AR and a pocket full of ammo, ran barefoot out the door to stop this tragedy from going any further. Yes, let's let's remember Stephen Williford because there are a lot of people uh, who never got to hear that name. Stephen Williford is a hero. So, all right. Anything else that we want to squib? You had something you were starting to say, uh, and you kind of got cut off. So go ahead. In all the first aid classes I've taken, they always let us know about Good Samaritan laws. There are people that have asked before in the classes, so they, br they bring it up, that uh, people are worried about liability. If you go to save somebody's life and they expire while you're performing CPR or something like that, are you held liable? Every class I've taken, they said, no, there are Good Samaritan laws to protect you from being sued if somebody dies while you're trying to save their life. At least you did something. It's kind of funny how it doesn't work the other way around. Sometimes when you are trying to save somebody else's life, and I mean it's legit, like what Ghost is saying, it's a, it's a clean shoot, it's, a, it's an actual moment where deadly force or the threat of deadly force is called for in order to stop, stop what's going on, and uh, you can still be treated unfairly by the law. There's a book called The Santa Shooter or Santa Claus Shooter. It's written by a gentleman uh, here from Michigan. I met him. He was moonlighting as a Santa Claus, uh, you know, around Christmas time, you know, you know, doing the pictures and all the other stuff, right, as a second job. It's late. He's driving home, and there's a woman being attacked on the sidewalk by two guys. He pulls over, gets out in his Santa suit, 
and tries to fight off the two guys. One of them runs back to his car, gets a gun out of the car, and points it at him. He draws his concealed carry gun, and, uh, you know, I think some, some shots were exchanged. The guys took off, and at the end of the street, there's an off-duty cop in his car driving home from work or whatever, pulls up, sees him in the Santa Claus suit with the gun, and heard the gunshots, and, you know, uh, arrest him he you know the guy complies the woman's going he saved my life they don't care he was in jail for a year before he finally got out and it was a mess i mean i talked to him i'm like dude why didn't you just have that woman explain to the police they didn't want to hear it they didn't care even a lawyer said if you if you have her do that anywhere before the end of the trial you will lose the trial i mean it was just uh, I haven't read the book. I, I need to buy it. You can get it on Amazon. And he, he, he wrote the book more or less to recoup all of his costs for legal fees because uh, he, you know, he didn't have uh, self-defense uh, insurance at the time. Uh, so you'll see him go to uh, gun rallies and things like that to present his story. Now, he doesn't present his story to convince people that they shouldn't try to protect somebody else's life or that they shouldn't conceal carry or take on any of that sort of responsibility. He's just letting other people know, be prepared for bad things to happen to you, even though you're doing a good thing, because the law is not always fair. It just isn't. There are bizarre stories of people who have used a firearm in self-defense or used the threat of using their firearm in self-defense and gone to jail and lost a lot of stuff and it's not fair. It's not right. Just be ready for that if it were to happen to you. Just be willing to accept the fact that you may be treated unfairly. Life is not fair. But it sure beats being dead. Yeah. yeah. And West Virginia kind of has sort of a good Samaritan law for defensive shootings. We can't be held civilly liable if we have to shoot a bad guy in self-defense of ourselves or someone else. And most of the time you're going to, the, if you have to use it in self-defense, you're not going to be charged with any crime. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head in this state that's been charged with a crime for having to use their weapon in self-defense. All right. Anybody have anything else they want to throw in there as far as this topic goes? Helping out somebody else, saving somebody else's life, not just your own or not just your, your family who's with you. I do know that in Ohio we have the uh, Castle Doctrine, which it applies to any dwelling that you are in, which is your home, your car, your yeah, place of business. Any place you have a legal right to be at the time. Yep, yep. So, you know. I wish uh, we had that. Yeah, it, it. I don't know, man. I Like I said, man, I, I really don't want to draw it on on anybody, but y'all better pay attention because we're armed. And we're going to shoot back. I mean. So, so before we move on to the next topic, Squib, I'm just curious. Um, do you think after the Santa Claus guy uh, traded shots and sent those other guys running, do you think he just said, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal? You know, I should have asked him if he said that. He's a real nice guy. The strange <laughs> thing is. Uh, you ask him for me? The, the two, if I see him again, I'll ask him. The two guys. Uh, disappeared never to be found again they never found and he was still prosecuted even though there was no nobody to testify against him it was that cop the off-duty cop who didn't see the whole incident and and the the prosecutor and the judge that were more or less kind of out to get him and that can happen in a situation even where you're not trying to defend somebody else you're trying Sweet. to just defend yourself they wanted to make an example of him and try and deter other gun owners huh Maybe. I don't know. I just know that th things are unfair. In your state, a truck driver was uh, at a truck stop and another truck driver pulled in front of him and blocked him so he couldn't get out. And uh, he went over to that other truck driver and said, hey, man, can you move your truck? We're trying to leave here. And, you know, he went back to his truck and the other guy came at him and was yelling and cussing and threatening and trying to climb up inside the truck. And he said, hey, man, I've got a gun in here. You don't want any of this. And the other guy went back to his truck and moved his truck. He never pulled the gun. He never followed the guy. He didn't do anything. He just told him, hey, I've got a gun in here. 
Never showed it. Never pulled it out. Nothing like that. He got on the road. He's driving down the road. He gets lit up. And uh, they, they said, did you threaten somebody? And he told them the story. Cops didn't care. Took him away to jail. Put him in jail all weekend. They weren't going to see the judge until the following Monday. Didn't give him his insulin medication. He's getting sick in jail over the weekend. And uh, he ended up spending all kinds of money and whatnot trying to defend himself. The guy who blocked him, the guy who threatened him, the guy he told, hey, man, you don't want none of this. I've got a gun. Disappeared. Never showed up. They couldn't find out. He called, but he didn't give his information or nothing. And the cops still ran with it. The prosecutor still ran with it. Mm -hmm. There are bizarre stories like that where people have a right to conceal carry or open carry and have a right to defend themselves or other people, and they're not treated fairly. I'm not trying to scare anybody away, but I want people to understand. Again, Don't later. think that just because you're doing the right thing means that the judge or the cops will. Know your state laws. Know the state laws towards brandishing. What is and isn't considered brandishing, if this, it's illegal or not. But in both both the stories I told you, the people who were concealed carrying did not violate any state laws. Nope. Well, I don't know, because saying you have a gun can be considered brandishing. And if you aren't in uh, thinking that you're in imminent danger of those four things I listed, then, again, that's a terroristic threat. Yep. So... I'm, it was I'm, arguable that he violated a law, even though we wouldn't think so. Um, be, again, sometimes what you say does matter. So be mindful. You're responsible for every word that comes out of your mouth. Whether or not we have freedom of speech, you're responsible for every word that comes out of your mouth, just like every bullet that comes out of your muzzle. I so, guess it depends on the judge, right? It, it can. Yeah. The jurisdiction, the judge, everything. It can all play into it. Just be prepared, I think, is mostly what Squibb was saying just be prepared for this just because you think you're doing the right thing doesn't mean you get rewarded for it it's possible to do everything right and still lose yeah uh, you know it, it's a sad thing us as individuals we're gonna go okay we're gonna defend ourselves and i'm a truck driver and i've i've had two situations where uh my gun was out laying on the center console and somebody opened the side door and it was it was some random uh truck uh maintenance guy that was like hey you need help and i'm like no i pulled over to blow my nose and make a phone call and he opened my side door my passenger door and and my gun was like i'm like dude you know that's a good way to get shot you don't just walk up and open the goddamn door you know what i mean language uh sorry i know <laughs> but no, you do not walk up and open the dang door and go, hey, what's going on? I mean, honestly, yeah. to me, I'm like, I'm sitting there trying to make a phone call, calling my boss, and I'm 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 on my phone doing the uh Google map thing, and this guy just walks up and opens the passenger door. And at that point, I pulled my gun and I laid it on the little center console, which is where the uh drop axle controls are, and I'm like, Yeah, what? what who are you oh i didn't know you need some help i'm like um what and all he was was a truck maintenance guy out there looking to get some business you know what i mean he's like oh you broke down you need some help no i'm not broke down i'm making a phone call but for that guy to come up and open my side door to me i i don't know who the hell that guy is who, yeah, who is this guy goes back to common sense too i mean don't yeah you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes sometimes. Yeah, and I honestly, the when he said to me, he said, oh, well, I thought you were broke down. I said, "Um, you realize that's a good way to get shot, right? He's like, huh. I said, no, not huh, huh. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, all's well that ends well there, right? Yeah, yeah. But honestly, it, it God, it's such a fine line that, mm, you know, you're talking about this guy that says, I got a gun, and then somebody reports him. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. And sometimes you get back into maybe if you feel like you got to do that, you should probably be the guy calling 911 first. Always. My yeah, thing you know. is, in both stories, the, the people that started it disappeared. Right then and there, the case should be thrown out. But it isn't. So don't think that 
common sense is necessarily the the, the way of, of the law, no matter where you're at. Right. Yep, yep, exactly. All right. So real quick before we sign off, I want to get a few opinions on this. Um, this goes back to that video where they were talking about some stuff I didn't necessarily agree with or, or care for the way it was said. Um, and Jim, I think you kind of touched on this a little bit too a little while ago. But um, as far as uh, the chambering, or I think somebody else mentioned chambering around or carrying with around in the chamber. Um, I want to get into this one a little bit because the the general consensus for all of us, I believe, is you know carry with one in the chamber because you never know what's going to happen and uh it's kind of like you know driving without your seatbelt on are you going to have enough time to put that seatbelt on if you get into a wreck probably not are you going to have time to chamber around if you have to pull that gun out and use it probably not but take, take me off the list of people saying you have to chamber around okay well hold on because that's where i'm going with this the video I that I watched, they said basically, um, and I'd have to go back and watch it. They may have said this literally, that if you carry without a round in the chamber, you're stupid. Uh, I believe they even used a word that I detest that started with an R that's worse than stupid. Um, if you carry with an empty chamber that you you aren't smart and, and you're dumb. Um, so let me just say this, though. When I first started concealed carrying... I'd never carried a gun before, and I know the reputation that Glocks have for, you know, the internal safeties, um, the blade and the trigger and the firing pin block and everything else. But still, the first couple days that I carried, I carried with an empty chamber. And the thing about a Glock is that trigger doesn't reset itself until you cycle the slide. So you can tell if the trigger has been pulled which would have released the tension on the striker with a Glock with it. And I, so I carried with a cock striker on an empty chamber a couple of days, checked the trigger at the end of the day. Of course it hadn't been pulled. Everything was fine. The gun would not have gone off. And I started to trust it. And I started carrying with a loaded chamber. The reason I did that is because I was building up my confidence, not just in my firearm, but in myself as a concealed carrier. Um, and Squib, I think this may be, you and I are probably coming from the same place on this, but no, no, the whole, I I'm new to, I'm new to concealed carrying. I'm new to carrying a gun at all. I can't have a round in a chamber cause I'm scared. No, that's not the reason at all. Okay. Nope. Well, the reason I'm, the reason I'm saying this is because if you choose to carry and you don't have a round in the chamber, whatever the reason is, you're not comfortable. You are from Israel and you were trained that way, maybe by, um, the what is it, IDF um, <clears throat> whatever the reason is let's not tell people they're stupid because at least they're carrying it goes back to that do carry a gun every day right um, get comfortable do whatever you have to do but still if I had to choose between not carrying at all or you know carrying with a round in the chamber um, and there was no other option I'm still, if I got to choose between no carry and carry without a round in the chamber, I'm still going to take that gun and have it on me. And maybe I'll be able to get to a position where I can chamber around. I don't know the situation. I don't agree with it personally. And I don't carry with an empty chamber, but I'm not, again, I'm not going to shame somebody tell them they're stupid and turn them off to carrying altogether just because they say that they don't carry with a round in the chamber. You might drive without your seatbelt on. That doesn't affect me, um, unless I'm the one that comes along and sees the you know the mess. But just because I don't do it doesn't mean that my way is the only way. So, Squib, go ahead with with your thoughts on it, and then we'll get everybody else involved. I say do either or. But I I'm don't. I'm not big on the whole. Oh, I'm new to guns. I'm scared. Crap. That just doesn't. I'm not. You know, you're either in it or you're not. I understand. There there are all kinds of if. If you're, if you're new to guns and you're that worried that the gun is going to just go off or you don't know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be open or concealed carrying in public yet. You need to improve your knowledge and your skills before you get to this point. 
So that's kind of why I was saying earlier, some of this stuff is kind of common sense. Now, there's, you know, in some places, there's no laws that say you can't just go from never touched a gun to concealed carrying that afternoon. And I'm, in some ways, I'm fine with that because I'm not one of these people that mandates training and all this other stuff. Because what one person calls training, another person calls a scam. Uh, it's just the whole, there are people that don't like guns with external safeties. And I'm one of the people that do. But I'm not going to tell you you have to have one. Kind of like what you were saying uh, uh, about, you know, you, my way is not the only way. There are so many different variations on this. Sometimes I open carry. Sometimes I can still carry. Sometimes I carry with a round in chamber. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I carry 45. Sometimes I carry 9. And the list just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. I like having the right or the option to do any of it. If somebody wants to tell me that I'm, insert negative word here, I don't really care what their opinion is. I probably know more about guns than them anyhow. So I don't care. Because there's a lot of people getting on YouTube calling themselves instructors that couldn't instruct their way out of a paper bag. So do your own due diligence when you're getting this information, even from guys like us. Mm -hmm. Just because, that's why I said earlier too, that some of this stuff is opinion. Some of the do's and don'ts that were said are not like laws or... Uh, any, some of it were, were people's opinions on how they do things and why they do things. And if you want to, if you want to copy somebody's ideas until you come up with something of your own, there's nothing wrong with that either. It's a starting point, right? It's a benchmark for you. But you know, don't ever be intimidated to think for yourself. Don't ever be intimidated to come up with your own way, as long as you're not violating any laws or jeopardizing anybody else's safety. Hey, man, you do you, and I'll do me. Sandy, I'll say this. Um, I've carried for uh, going on 11 years now, and the first year and a half, I didn't put one in the chamber. But after that, there's one in the chamber. I, I carry with one in the chamber. I, well, I, yeah, the, I, reason, I the reason that I would say, if, if you said, well, what's your reasoning for, for not carrying with one in the chamber, whether it be a handgun or a, or a long gun? whether it be open or concealed, whatever the circumstance, whether I'm at the range, whether I'm hunting or whatever it is, it's because of NDs. There are more NDs out there than actual times where you actually use the gun for, for something. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you know, NDs are people that haven't trained enough to know not to keep their no, freaking booger hook off the Even the, bank, the but... most experienced person can have an ND. D. Yes, Anybody can have absolutely. An I, absolutely. I, yes, I have had that. I'm sorry. I'm not going to keep warning people about their language. Double A, if you catch this later, if you're mad, I'm sorry. I'm mad about the language, so we're not going to listen to it. It but, happens. But, people slip. It, try and do better, or we won't have people on our panel. But um, I'm not okay. saying... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Squib. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'm not saying you should count on having an ND, and I'm not saying you should be so scared of it that you never train with it, you never go to the range, you never carry with one in a chamber, whatever. But there are certain circumstances where if you don't have the gun loaded or you don't have one in the chamber, and I'm not necessarily talking about um, every time you carry either, but there may be, for example, when we were at the uh, rallies in Ohio and in Michigan, they asked us not to carry with a round in a chamber. There were people carrying long guns out there. If anybody's ever used an AR-15 with a direct impingement system and you, you've, ever, you've ever slammed it down on the ground, that bolt's going to go slamming home. If you've got a round in the chamber, that gun could go off. And there were lots and lots of AR-15s at the two-way rally. There's a good example of where you don't carry with a round in a chamber. You don't risk an ND and you do not embarrass our community by giving us a, 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 a bad name because somebody decided, you know, this, that, and the other, and the, and the gun went off. And I understand there's lots of people that, you know, oh, the gun's not going to go, the gun, gun's not going to go off. There are lots of people that have been killed by an empty gun. And if you don't like the safety, you get a gun without a safety or just leave the safety off or whatever it is, but just go with personal preference. Just understand that there may be some times where using that safety or having an empty chamber can be practical. I'm not saying every day, just like I'm not the person that's going to tell you, you must carry every day. I don't care if you carry every day. I don't. But just because I don't, don't mean that you can't carry every day if you want to. Carry with it around in the chamber every day if you want to. It's, but just what you were saying about, you know, the name calling stuff, don't, don't fall for that. One of Jaeger's guys 
when he uh, made his opinion quite clear on what he thought about gun safety, I said, I'll never train with this guy. You know, and he said it right there on YouTube. So he, re he represented the entire company when he said that. So just understand that you need to make your own opinions on, on safety in order to be safe for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Real, real quick, too, out in the chat, uh, Stealth Hunter had said here a while back that in some states, um, threatening death or bodily harm with a, with a firearm is actually a mis uh, misdemeanor or a felony in some jurisdictions. So, um, yeah, sometimes, like I said, it's it's not. So is it in Nebraska? I'd have to find out. I don't know. Uh. For sure. uh, that I don't know. And hopefully I never have to find out. Right. So. So, yeah. Um, all righty. So. All right. One more thing. Um, well, I guess Squib and, and I've kind of been talking a lot about this. Anybody else have anything you want to throw in as far as carrying chambered, not carrying chambered? Um, let's let's go over some of the maybe the the pros and cons of it right um you know the pros are you're not going to get that negligent discharge for those of you who maybe don't know an nd the squib said means negligent discharge and a lot of us prefer that term to accidental discharge because the guns don't go off accidentally guns go off because of either intent or negligence usually so my guns can't fire accidentally they have redundant safeties to stop them from firing accidentally if my gun goes off i didn't mean it to my negligence so that's what squib was saying with an nd um carrying with an empty chamber <clears throat> sure does cut down on that right um what other pros can people see as far as carrying with the empty chamber or also um, and this is not a this is not a, a racist or nationalist term um israeli carry because the the israeli defense force actually gets trained that way you want a pro or do you want a con to carrying it right now? For now we'll come back around and, and do the con i think we all agree that it's not the way to go but let's yeah let's just for the sake of you know getting the info out let's let's talk about um let's talk about some of the reasons why people do it or you know the the pros to doing it I should so say. other than the other than the negligent discharge aspect i would think that one of them is there are some people and it is what it is that just won't get past the psychological hurdle of yeah the idea of carrying with one in the chamber and and i to be honest if they, if they don't you know because people can train all they want and they're just trying to be extra super careful to avoid that negligent discharge and i'd, I'd rather see them carry without one in the chamber and still carry than than not yeah i think that there are people out there that the, one of the pros is, is it makes you comfortable it makes you confident mm -hmm. that everything's okay and and i want to take this a direction that you know might not be popular but i don't really care that's all right there are people out there that won't carry one in the chamber and have a safety on okay so they have a safety on and without one in the chamber and understand that there are people that do that because they want to have the comfort of a gun they can practice they can be extremely proficient but for some reason they don't feel comfortable carrying it around the chamber or the safety off at that point and that's okay it might change but if you're, let's say, a 21-year-old female going to college or getting your first job and you work or go to school in a place that may be crime heavy and they're not comfortable at that point carrying around a chamber, at least they know that they've got it there if they need it. And so hopefully, like we said, I'll say, hopefully they transition into carrying one in the chamber and all of that. But if putting a safety on and carrying one without the chamber at least gets their foot in the door, I'm okay with that, you know. Something about when I uh, when I used to conceal carry, and and now when I open carry, I don't draw fast. I never have. I've never been fast on the draw, so it really doesn't affect me. I do both. Sometimes I put around in chamber. Sometimes I don't. I just don't have any sort of set rule about anything other than say, like you know, <laughs> for a rally where the police are asking us to please not do that or something. But I mean, uh, if I, you know, if I was a faster draw, some guys uh, are really fast or they just think they're really fast. 
I'm not getting that gun out. And especially if the guy's already got a gun in my face, I couldn't draw the gun fast enough to save my life anyhow. You'll never so whether I've got a round in a chamber. Hmm? You'll never outdraw a drawn gun. Right. So whether I've got a round in a chamber and a safety on and it's cocked, or I don't have a round in the chamber, for me, it's more about just having it there. That's why when I open carry, I have a flap holster. Do you know how, how comfortable somebody is when they're, they're kind of looking at it going, is that a gun? Not <laughs> jumping, freaking out because I look like I'm in, you know, wearing some sort of tactical belt or something. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. But, I mean, it, it, it looks less threatening, but it's still right there. If, if uh, I'm walking my dog and somebody lets their dog out at my dog, I can pull that flap, pull the gun, flip the safety, and shoot the other dog if I have to. You know, there's been a situation where I almost had to do that, right? And and um, it, it's I I I don't I don't ever anticipate me becoming a faster draw than I am. I just really don't. So some people out there, they're they're like me. They can't. They're they're not. You know, they're they're not. Um, uh, Why did I draw a blank on his name? Uh, the uh, there was a guy that uh, used to draw uh, the uh, single action army really fast. Why am I drawing a? Uh, I forgot his name. Yeah, Bob Munden. Thank you. I'm no Bob Munden. You met that dude. I'm, yeah, and I really. Yeah, that was a cool. Kid. Yeah. Well, I, I will never be Bob Munden, no matter what, and yeah. that's just you know the way it is. I would like to improve my my uh, skills uh, drawing drawing firearms, and maybe one day I, I'll put more time into it. But uh, at least I've got it on me. And, and I know for some people that's, oh, it's not good enough. Hey, man, it's my life. Don't worry about it, you know? <laughs> hey, man, so, I, I'll tell you what, and, and you and I have not always agreed, but uh, I'm all for it, man. I support anyone that's willing to carry a gun. And if, if it means that you carry a gun with one out of the chamber and a safety on and you're proficient at that, you can, you know, you practice with that way. Amen, brother. Amen. Now, the, as far as the drawing, out drawing somebody that already has their gun drawn, Mythbusters, ironically enough, did an episode on that. And the person who was drawing their gun always got the first shot off. Every single time. The person that had their gun drawn did not react fast enough to get the first shot. They were using those um, chalk ball guns. That, that, are, that may or may not be the case, but I'm not going to take that chance. Now, going back to... No. I, was out there. I thought that was interesting. It that's is it's very interesting, but that's not a chance I'm willing to take. No, I didn't say it was. I yeah, me neither. I'm not yeah. Out there, so, you know, I'm the same way. I'm a random Jeopardy guy, so I'll just throw out another random Jeopardy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fast enough draw either, so I know that I would lose that race. But, Squib, going back to what you were saying about, you know, drawing slowly, um, I've heard this. I don't know if this is a military thing that people are taught or not obviously i'm not a soldier um but um i've always heard that slow is smooth and smooth is fast that's true uh you, you know what I, I didn't hear that until after after i got out ghost did you hear that when you were in not not in the marines no that was uh more competitive shooting when i got started getting to that's when i started hearing that a lot when when uh, when we did rifle quals, we did both slow and rapid fire uh, with the rifle. When I qualified with the M9, I don't remember there being a rapid fire. There um, wasn't when was I still, did, no, no. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. But but the thing is, though, um, <laughs> I just recorded a speaking squibbish on mag dumps today. <laughs> this is making me think about that. Um, you know, there is there's a time, and they do, you know, a lot of places training with double taps and i'm all for double taps i'm all also all for one shot one kill but there may be a situation where you need to 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 shoot more than twice because you miss you didn't hit a vital area the person's on drugs they're on adrenaline whatever it is uh so i mean having speed at anything whether it be pulling the trigger uh getting the gun you know pointed at the at the target and drawing it Racking a, a round in the chair, whatever it is, you know, being able to flip the safety off as you're drawing, whatever it is, it uh, is going to be the situation that you do. The when when you take your time to practice, think about that stuff. I mean, you know, there's there's some things to be said too about practicing with the offhand. I'm not into the whole racking it on your leg with the rear sight thing, but I, I do believe in practicing with your offhand. 
you know, but I mean, there's some other people that, you know, they've got to, they've got to, uh, you know, take it a step further and further. It's, it's whatever your comfort level is, whatever you think is going to be your situation. And you can sit there and try to fantasize in your head what's going to happen. Dude, that's not the way it really goes down. It's going to be a mess. You're going to be scared. It's going to be a mess. Uh, thing, time is going to slow down. I mean, it just everything. So it's not like, it's not like no matter what sort of training you do or how many different scenarios you train for, you're going to be ready for everything. Sometimes you're going to have to mishmash your muscle memory and everything that you've learned to, to, to try to make the situation right, even though you've never trained for that particular situation. I mean, you see some of that stuff in some of the police training videos about odd, odd calls that uh, they've had to go to and the weird things that have happened uh, and guns have been involved. And it's just like, wow, you would have never seen that coming. So this goes back more to, I think, what you were talking about earlier about the responsibility to be able to use this thing and what Ghost was saying about, you know, if you can't handle it, maybe you shouldn't carry. There's just a lot of things for people to consider. I think the biggest thing, and you can kind of sum all of this up into the discussion, which is a great discussion, by the way, but, you know, concealed carry. I was going to say carrying, whether it's open or concealed. I prefer concealed, but carrying in general on a daily basis is a pretty important decision to make in your life. It's not something you just say, hey, I think I'll start carrying today or, you know, and all that. It needs to be a conscious decision and, and, and have multiple variables that you have to think about. And, and it just comes down to it. Uh, you can be a gun person and not want or need to carry. And that's okay. You know, I, I don't think that everyone who owns a gun or is a gun person should have to carry or feel like they should have to carry. It's a responsibility that are, that's it, not for everybody. So, I mean, I, got, like, you know, I think you agree with Squibb and everyone on this panel, I think will agree that if you don't feel comfortable, then don't carry. And because it is, it's a massive responsibility. I just want the right to do it to always be exactly. available for me. Exactly. Whether yeah. I choose to use that right or not is my choice, but I always want, I guess I'm pro-choice. Right. I'm pro I'm pro <laughs> Oh Lord, don't do, don't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> no, but I hear you. It's, 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 it's not restricting that choice. And, and there are people that may not carry today that five years down the road might feel comfortable to carry. And um, so don't feel like you have to rush into it. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's somebody I'm working on right now that I think it's going to take years, but I think, I think I'm going to get there. But I think that if I try to rush it, he's not going to, he's, he's, he's never going to want to, you know, really take that next step and then that next step and that next step and that next step. So sometimes uh, that's what you got to do. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm not going to twist his arm. He's got to make that decision for himself. So as long as we have choices available to us when it comes to exercising our constitutional rights, we'll be able to make up our minds for ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So uh, it's been brought to my attention that we're past 11 o'clock. We are starting to quark on G a little bit because the, uh, the daily gun show is happening uh, same time. So I think we will wrap this up. There's a couple things that we didn't get to that I think we will get to here in weeks to come. Uh, some of the things that were mentioned in the video and some of the things that, that we thought up ourselves here, um, press checks, whether or not they're stupid or not, um, open carry in general, because I was also uh, informed on that video that if you open carry, then you're stupid. Unless you're a cop, you should not open carry. Um, in some instances, I concur. In other instances, I uh, wholeheartedly disagree, uh, especially the second day of the month in the states that allow open carry. But uh, we'll get into that another night. Um, two other things as far as concealed carry go, uh, small of the back and appendix. Uh, we can have a whole, probably a whole night's worth of discussion just about where to carry and how. Um, but uh, we're going to cover some of that stuff. So um, feel free to uh, leave some comments, not in the live chat, but maybe uh, once this goes to replay, leave some comments down below. Um, or catch us on Facebook or, or just email sandhillshooter at gmail.com uh, with your thoughts on any of those press checks, open carry, small of the back, or appendix. Uh, again, they're not for everybody. Small of the back is not for everybody. Appendix is not for everybody, especially not when they're shaped the way I'm shaped. Um, doesn't work for me. 
doesn't mean it's bad for everybody. So got a little tactical girth there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tap tap the top, baby. Bod, I generally say tap tactical muffin top. Yep, tactical um, muffin top. Really <laughs> Is a nice little uh, protective shelf and a rain uh, mm -hmm. rain cover. That's just the uh, reserve in case we ever have a famine. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't say much. I have I have a I have a touch of that myself. <laughs> just enough. It, it's for best. it's for buoyancy with all that flooding. All the best tactical decks and top. Yes. Uh, yep. We've had several weeks in a row of sub uh, sub freezing and sub zero temperatures, and uh, tell you what. I was a popular person at my house to snuggle with. The wife, no, I would just die. Told really me like about it. Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I would just. I would just Travis, die. we said we wouldn't talk about that. Man, what I'd can probably, we imagine? What What happens on Brokeback Mountain stays on Brokeback Mountain. I, I think I would die twice now. <laughs> I just can't quit you. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. All right. Uh, one last thing before we uh, have everybody sign off. Double A out there in the chat. I know you're still watching. We still love you. And I'm pretty sure I heard an F-bomb. If I didn't, I'm sorry. I did, I booted you for nothing. But uh, try and put a filter in place. We do. Uh, it's one of the requirements to, to be on the channel or to be on the panel is uh, to, to have that filter. Just because, as, as Sandhill Sweetheart mentioned, sometimes her mom, uh, sometimes a good friend of ours who is uh, 13 years old, watch these. Uh, I've had other viewers comment that they can watch our show with the kids in the room. They don't have to wait till the kids go to bed to watch it. Uh, they can catch it live and not a lot of them they can catch live. So uh, I pride myself in that and that's what I want to continue. Um, I'm more worried about that than I am channel strikes to be honest. But uh, for now we will we'll let it go and yeah double A we still love you. Uh, no hard feelings on this side hopefully not on your end. So real quick, let me see who's still in the chat that I can shout out. We've got Leo Red, uh, Seven Wonders is here. Of course, Sandhill Sweetheart has been uh, keeping the chat going. Double A's out there. Uh, let's see who else do I have. We've got uh, Boob Sweat. We've got who else did I see? Stealth Hunter still out there. Treads out there. Um, Gary is out there. Seven Wonders is giving my girl flowers. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Can't be a good thing. Um, stay away from my girl, Earl. Freedom she, for all is out there. She's too old for him. <laughs> or he's too young for her. She does like younger men, though. Just saying. Don't ask me how I know. She's 29. She'll always be 29. Four conservative is out there. Um, let's see. Stephen Brown. We saw you out there. Ghost has been in and out of the chat out there. Uh, poor conservative, did I say you already? Midnight Range out there, Rob D, Hill Climb, Ohio JB. Um, again, I know I'm going to miss people, so make sure that you're active in the chat at the beginning or at the end if you want to hear your name shouted out. Uh, Tom Olafson was out there. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Uh, Keith Gregory, I saw you out there. Stephen Dawkins, just been a ton of people come and go throughout the night, so we appreciate it. Excuse me. We appreciate everybody uh, checking in with us and being part of the chat. Agorizer, saw you out there. Guitar Man Pete um, made a contribution to the hashtag Nebraska Strong Fund. So thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Guitar Man Pete, Jim Burgess, Gizzard Gary, those of you that have done it here while we've been chatting. Over on the Gun Channel side, we've got uh, Kingpin, we've got Gizzard Gary, we've got Jim out there, Rich White out there. Uh, so, again, thanks, everybody, for being there and here. And we will let everybody say uh, say goodnight. Any plugs you want to make for your channel or for your videos, go ahead and make those as well. So uh, let's start over there again with that uh, very good-looking heister. And let's go with Mr. Forklift Squib. Squib lift. <laughs> you know, I think I am going to change the channel name. <laughs> <laughs> will you name, will you please change it to squib lift? Get I squib think lifted. I will. But if I do that, I think I will have to take uh, that's not a high shirt, it's a Raymond, which is oh. about the, the about the most ghetto of forklifts you can get. I'm more of a Yale or Crown guy or a, a Drexel. Drexel makes a good one. I I actually got spoiled by cat, so uh yeah, but I I don't know if cat actually makes cat. Don't somebody else make them for them? No uh, idea whatsoever, but they sure uh, do ride nice. It's just and I know, being, 
just like being on a uh, piece of you know heavy iron with solid tires on concrete rides super smooth uh, as long as it's not moving so yeah, uh, I say I say I like I like Yales, but they make heisters in the same factory, and I'm not a big fan of heisters. But yeah, those are those are two Raymonds right there, and they're uh, uh, stay away from them if you can. Uh, yeah, th maybe I will change it to squib lift, and uh, yeah, I've actually got one or two short videos that uh, I might be putting on that that channel, but it's it's nothing special. Uh, and then on, on the uh, Squiblo channel, I've got some speaking squibbish I'm working on. They might ruffle some feathers. They might bore people to tears. I don't know. Uh, I, need to, I need to get those uh, finished up and, and get them out. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun making videos, but I'm doing a ton of voiceovers. I'm not really happy with my work, uh, doing a lot of editing not happy with my work so uh i'm not i'm not putting out uh as many videos as uh as uh i could so i i need to i need to try to put some more time into that but right now i've been i've been kind of busy with work so appreciate everybody who watches and comments and uh, just having fun making videos awesome awesome well thanks for being here if you don't name it squib lift at least name it squibward just saying. okay <laughs> All right, moving right along. Ghost Tactical. Any closing thoughts you want to have? Hey, or any plugs? Go ahead and help yourself. Thanks for having me. It was a great chat. Yeah. Um, no, I get out there, practice, be proficient with your firearm, take someone new to the range, introduce them to a safe, fun way to shooting, turn your camera on, be part of the solution, all that stuff. But more importantly, man, just just support everybody. And if you're not able to do videos and you watch videos, share them. That's the best way to get the message across multiple platforms is sharing because you never know who you're going to reach with a share. So please share all these guys' content. Everyone out here puts great stuff out. So uh, thanks for having me, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. All right. Gizzard Gary, we'll say goodnight to you. or let you say goodnight, Gracie. Hey, well, thanks for having me. Uh, check out my website at gizzardgary.com. If you're the least bit interested in the Taurus TX-22, I have a couple videos out this week. You can check them out. Don't also, Travis, you'll be all over that. Oh, yeah. And uh, Friday nights, Foul Territory, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, Sunday mornings, uh, early bird chat, 10 Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. So, uh, once again, thanks for the invite. Give them the bird. Absolutely give them the bird. And make sure you go check out Squib Load and Ghost Tactical and Gizzard Gary uh, on lots of different platforms, not just YouTube, but uh, GunStreamer and other places as well. So, all right, Jim Burgess, glad to see you back again. Always, you, always good to have you in our chats. Yeah, so uh, last weekend, uh, not last weekend, weekend before last, I actually saw a squib load kill a CZ Scorpion. It was, it was, it was fascinating. Blew the, blew the side out of the receiver. Oh my god! Well, I, I, is it awesome? I mean, was it awesome to see nobody was hurt? Nobody was hurt. Uh, the guy, you know, everybody had their eye pro on, and uh, all, all the all the shrapnel flew out to the to the left, and okay. like I don't know, fifteen twenty yards away. <laughs> so the the squib load lodged the bullet lodged in the barrel, and the, the round after that blew it apart. Then is that what happened? Yep. No, I think he was referring to me. That's right, Burgess. I yeah. am dangerous. Yeah, he's, he's a, <laughs> the squib lift blows up CZs. You're everyone's problem, Kazansky. Yep. Uh, and this was actually a uh, uh, post sample full auto too, so it, it was oh, wow. somewhat spectacular. Uh, wow. That was an expensive little uh, mishap. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he 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 gathered the the guy who owns it. Uh, Runs a shop. He 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 went out and gathered up all the the pieces and the the casings and the box ammo that was used. So he had the the, the lot number and everything. And he's going to try to go off and make a claim. But be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Well, I'm glad nobody was hurt. That's that's the best part of it. But the, we were talking about squibs, so the receiver can be replaced. So yeah, uh, yeah. Just look what you can do without even trying squib. You you really are dangerous. <laughs> All right, so we'll move along to Obnoxious One. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, sir. Uh, let's see. I got chat. My uh, Orange Blood, It's Not the Closer, is on Thursday night this week at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're covering 
a little bit of Tulsa chat because I got a I got a message from Foos. So we're gonna we're gonna cement everything and go over what's what's going on there, and then probably cover the bump stocks a little bit because that deadline is coming up, and then maybe a couple other things, and then I'll be on uh, Saturday night at 11 p.m. with Sarge, and check out my channel, not just one. I dropped my uh, California Highway Patrol gun video today oh. to get uh, Mel the Nut off my rear end. <laughs> so, and it really didn't shut him up that much. He's he's still he's still chirping away about it. Not but, so much, Mel, but that's okay. We still yep. And I got a couple other videos in the pipe because I do believe in, in carrying one in the pipe, so I've always got a video ready as well. Loaded up, ready to go. Got it. Good advice. All right. Uh, Rich White, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Um, and uh, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. over on the Unloaded Media Channel, you can check out This Week Unloaded. And I'll probably end up being on Obnoxious' this show come Thursday, and then Sarge's show sun Saturday, and um, Snobbify's doing his show Saturday, and then the closer on Sunday. So. Oh, uh, whoosh. Yeah, everyone Somebody had to say it, right? David so, left earlier from Google. Which, which night and time, and which time zone is that? We've got people from one end of the country. Eastern, Eastern, Eastern time zone. 8 o'clock Eastern. Yes. Okay. All right. Good to know. It's Seven Yep. Good, good stuff on unloaded media all right travis p11 yeah man hey yeah appreciate the invite as usual it was a great chat tonight a lot of good information for people that have you know been carrying for a while and and uh yeah no good stuff appreciate the invite um do check out the channel travis p11 over on uh let's see gunchannels.com youtube.org and youtube <coughs> excuse me and then uh, caliber corner will be saturday morning at 8 a.m on gunchannels.com 8 a.m central time the only time zone that matters, right in the middle. Well, for of those of us that are not underwater, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, but that's only through March, right? Starting in April, we'll have a new night. Yeah, time. April will be uh, six to eight Eastern time, five to seven Central time on Thursday nights, right before okay. uh, Sarge's show, Sarge's show kicks off. So we'll try to keep ourselves limited to about two hours. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Well, and again, as you know, some nights I can join you, some nights I can't, but I'll be there when I can. Um, sounds good. Yeah, I and mean, hopefully you can see everybody on the panel and. Maybe pick up a few new faces, and we'll see who shows up. So, thanks, man. You betcha. You betcha. Yep. Yep. All right. And then a couple announcements real quick for those of you that are still with us. Um, we did hit 1,500 subscribers on YouTube this last uh, couple days, and we've jumped to over 500 followers on Facebook now because I, I had a picture that uh, everybody and in, in their uncle across the state of Nebraska seems to be sharing uh, which is cool. I'm getting some exposure. So I've got a lot of Facebook followers, uh, not much on gun streamers. So we've got a giveaway that we're going to plan, but I'm not giving away nothing until we get to 1500 on YouTube, which we're there and 200 on gun streamer, which we're nowhere near. So once we get to 200 on gun streamer, then the people who are on gun streamer and YouTube are qualified for a giveaway. And we will throw in a bonus prize. If that person also follows us on Facebook. So make sure that, uh, uh, you get over there. If you're not subscribed to us on gun streamer, you're going to want to do that so that you can be eligible for, um, for a giveaway. And all you got to do is just be subscribed. And, uh, if you have different usernames on different platforms, including Facebook, then, uh, maybe catch us on, you know, uh, either an email or a, a message on Facebook. Just let us know that you are in all three places so that we know who you are. So we can get you on the list once we get to 200 on Gun streamer, the other milestones are met. Next week, we're going to throw, uh, throw a different kind of a chat up. Uh, just so you guys know this is coming, I won't, I, we won't have a panel next week. So you all get the night off from uh, having a talk. You can sure join us live. And I think we're going to try and go on Facebook Live and YouTube at the same time. It's just going to be Sandhill Sweetheart and me. And we're going to see how this works. If it works, we'll do it the last uh, Tuesday of every month. But uh, it's, it's going to be more of just a Q&A, just a chat with us. Um, and uh, similar to what, uh, like what Matt does on Sunday afternoons or, or Yankee does it on Thursday nights sometimes, um, or Sundays, I don't know when he does it. But, you know, we're, uh, there's no panel. Uh, just the two of us will be here to answer questions and, and talk about whatever you guys want to want to talk about or whatever we decide we want to talk about. But uh, we're going to see how that works. And, again, we will try and get that done. 
on YouTube and on Facebook both since we don't have um, a panel then we can kind of do the same thing on two different platforms and field questions in both places so we'll see how that works but uh, and again uh, hashtag Nebraska strong PayPal uh, money pool I threw a link back up there in the chat here towards the end so scroll up a little bit and find that again um, find that video either on Facebook or YouTube or both share the heck out of that video everybody if you would and tell everybody you know to please share it the more people we can get that word out to the more chances we have to get some money in that can do some good for people across Nebraska so um, if you missed the beginning of this chat you can go back and see some of the pictures that uh, or just do a YouTube search for Nebraska flooding uh, excuse me a Google search for Nebraska flooding um, or Nebraska blizzard and see some of the stuff that we've been faced with in the last week or two uh, it's not been pretty from one end of the state to the other and there's still a lot of stuff yet to go before uh, things get better so um, those of you who want to help out and uh, be neighborly see what Nebraska is all about it's about neighbors helping each other pulling together um, you know we we don't typically get a lot of federal aid for stuff that happens in Nebraska because we're a flyover state you know we don't matter to a lot of the federal agencies which is fine uh, we're pretty self-sufficient around here and we can help each other and we can help ourselves as much as we can but that doesn't mean we don't need or want help so anybody that wants to throw some some dollars towards the fund I will make sure that those dollars stay within the state of Nebraska they won't get uh, sent elsewhere um, those of you who have donated we appreciate you we love you and uh, those of you who want to do something and don't know what to do uh, you can help me fund the people who who do know what to do but again that money stays in Nebraska you have my word I will only give uh, give that money out to places that, that you know give me their word that it won't go out of the state so with that we will say thank you everybody for joining us and uh, again thanks everybody for doing your absolute bestest to keep it classy both in the panel and in the chats um, heck we'll just say bye Felicia and God bless everybody. Adios, Felicia. Adios. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Alicia. And give him the bird because Gary's not in here anymore. So make sure you. <laughs> <get the bird. laughs>